We've lost him. He is now into the void. But don't worry, he'll be back in just a moment. Guess what? It's North American ah. time, ladies and gentlemen, which means, Fox, welcome back. You were just saying something about North America, right? It's time for some North American action. Yes, I'm back from the darkness. We got some more North American action unfolding for you tonight. It happens to be two of the baddest teams to do it. Wester facing off against the New York Subliners Academy roster. Two of the toughest teams competing right now in the Challenger Series for the Call of Duty for the Call of Duty Challenger Series. And I wanted to take a moment to get you get you two guys' thoughts on them. So we have uh, we have the New York Subliners Academy team match up against Wester and Space. Yeah. I just kind of wanted to hear some of your insight on uh, the performance that we can expect from the New York Subliners Academy team. Uh, I mean, you look at this team in general, same thing with Wester, what don't they have? Uh, when the rosters got announced, again, one of the things I said yesterday was, where did Sib go? Sib was the one player on my eye from Atlanta Phase Academy. But uh, also speaking to Phoenix, and I, I talked to Sam for a while and I said, what was the makeup of this team? What were you thinking about? And a lot of it was like trying to counter Subliners Academy. And Subliners Academy, just look across the board, Glow Frosty, arguably one of the best ARs, amateur ARs in North America, arguably the world last season. Prolute and Saints together are powerhouse duo in S&D. And have spark there as well who who's him and saints have had uh time playing together before but this entire roster like frosty prolute saints and spark uh, it is it is a stacked s d team it is an, inc an incredibly competent hard point team and in control it's just a mixture of both so uh when you ask me you know what's the makeup of this team what do they look like uh i ask you what can they not do because they can do everything Right, it sounds like there are no missing parts right now in this matchup. On the opposite side, we have Wester. Um, Ali, I wanted to see, hear your thoughts as to how they stack up against this team. Uh, honestly, it's such a top up, toss up between both these teams. Wester is just so dominant at respawns, and I feel like New York's only chance would really be to kind of take over in S and Ds and hopefully catch them off their feet a little bit today, Fox. But I am super excited to get into this match. Yep, should be an exciting one ahead of us. The New York Subliners Academy facing off against Wester. But for the moment, we're going to take a look at the standings so we can see how the action's unfolding. Our standings, of course, is going to be our upcoming matchup with the two teams at the top, Subliners Academy and Wester. 5-0, 4-0 records. These guys have been dominant. The lowest amount of maps dropped out of everyone competing thus far. Of course, surrounding it out at the bottom, we got some teams being relegated. Mid maps, Maki Maki. Um, it's been an exciting match. It's been an exciting few weeks so far for the North American region. Uh, so I wanted to say, what are your, some of your biggest takeaways of the competition that we've seen in the North American region so far? We've gotten to jump back and forth between both Europe and North America. And I I'm sure you can point out some kind of differences here so far. So Ali, what are your thoughts? Um, personally, I feel like the Maki Maki disappointment has been kind of a shock to me. Um, but again, I still have my hopes high for them falling into the rest of the season. Um, as well as mid maps, uh, I'm looking for a little bit of change on their side. But I feel like the duo of Draza and Des are continue gonna continue to grow and continue to surprise us. So I'm excited to see what they keep doing later on this season. Space, do you have any thoughts about the standings in North America up to this point now that we've seen uh, some teams fighting for their relegation today and again some of the, the stiffest competition in the region upcoming on the stream tonight? Yeah, uh, North America traditionally has always had a little bit of a stronger pro scene than Europe. That's changed in recent years. But the big thing for me is the amount of former pros who are now funneling down into the challenger circuit. So there's more congestion when it comes to the middle of the pack teams. And we're seeing a spread of, of former pros who currently sit with people like Goderex and Kismet and Mox on Built by Gamers. You got Zed and Jurd on Team Zed. So it seems like there are more pros who have trickled down and they are struggling in the challenger circuit as opposed to Europe. Of course, and speaking of the challenger circuit, we have our next matchup upcoming. Let's take a look at our map layout for this series. Again, this is going to be Wester facing off against Subliners Academy, that New York, that roster with the brand from New York. Crossroads Hardpoint is going to start off our show, moving into Miami Search and Destroy. Checkmate Control Moscow Hardpoint for our second hardpoint of the series, and we're staying in Russia for Game 5 should we get to that point in this series. So, for these two teams, role-wise with these eight players, does anything jump out at you guys immediately? Ali, I'm going to ask you first. I'm definitely looking on Subliner's side, uh, looking at Saints and Glows Frosty, their roles of just being absolute nuisances, and not to mention vets on this team. I'm going to be watching them going to this crossroads hardpoint, especially because we have seen the plan this map before and how well they have played on it. Wester, obviously, you're looking at Gravity for his leadership, so I feel like we're going to see a very good head-to-head -head matchup between Gravity and Glow Frosty going into this map. 
Right. And now space, we've actually talked, touched on this a couple of times on the subject mm. of the Subliners Academy roster. And that yeah. is just how devastating these guys are in terms of 3-0 potential, right? Just come mm -hmm. through and making short work of the competition in a swift, uh, a swift explosion through three maps. Do you think that there is potential for that here against Wester? Do you think they might catch them on these maps specifically? No, I, I mean, the closest you might get is Crossroads. Miami is a toss up, but even then you can still kind of play it relatively safe. Crossroads might be the closest one. I'm surprised we didn't get a raid hard point, giving it its neutral ground for everyone. and You can really let your AR shine. But we saw Subliners Academy play Crossroads last night against Mr. Midmaps. They did really well there. But while Mr. Midmaps have failed in terms of the, their standings, uh, Wester have a similar lineup, right? Like you have those explosive players like Gravity, like Venom, who was a standout last year. Paul is your flex and Zaptius, who was under with Parasite for a while, who really got uh, the benefit of his teachings. And you look at this roster, like Crossroads is actually a dangerous map for subliners in game one. And at the end of this in Moscow, uh, this is a map that probably favors the likes of Wester because again, it's hard to shut down someone like Venom and Paul when they work together through top eskies. Uh, this is going to be a dangerous series. I honestly think this could go the distance. Should be very exciting indeed. Wester and Subliners Academy. We got some former professional players in the lobby. We got some top town in the Challenger series all mixed into one battle. And I'm looking to see how it all goes. So Ali, I wanna ask you, um, if we are, let's say we're looking at this through the eyes of Wester. Um, you're, go you're probably going to go the distance in a series like this, right? Facing off against the Subliners Academy, two, again, two very, very tough teams in the region right now. What kind of maps are you looking to take? What are you kind of shaking and worried about facing off against them, against those guys? Let me hear your thoughts. Well, so I feel like their most worrisome map is going to be that first crossroads hardpoint. And I think if they don't let it, if should they go down 0-1 in the series, losing that crossroads, going into s and I feel like Wester, what they're going to have to do is just pretend like that didn't, map didn't happen and go ahead and take the s and I feel like they'll contest very well into the control. I'm just worried about respawn uh, on the side of subliners because I feel like once Wester starts getting in their groove, starts taking some s and off the subliners, it could be a bit more of a Wester heavy um, series that we're looking at. But I feel like, yeah, Crossroads, I'm leaning towards subliners a little bit more, but later on to the series, I feel like Wester will be able to pick it up. Understandable, understandable. And so you mentioned you you foresee the Subliners Academy having some issues in respawn. I gotta say, I'm on the contrary with that one. I feel like I've been watching Saints play Hardpoint for what feels like a decade at this point. And I mean, he's got an awesome squad around him. I look forward to see them competing in it in this one. I would not doubt our seeing two hard points in this series. This one should certainly go the distance. It's a show to watch if you're just tuning in again. This is the Call of Duty Challenger series. We're watching Western and Subliners Academy. And Space, do you have any final thoughts on this matchup? Uh, I think that Subliner's best chance of getting a series jump would probably be game one. They, I assume they chose Crossroads because they have been favored. They, they tend to lean towards that map for game one hard points. Then you look at uh, Checkmate Control. I think West are a little bit better on that map. Their controls have been really, really dominant in scrims. Uh, I look at Miami S&D again, uh, a situation where West should be favored because that team coached uh, uh, by Phoenix, he turned a singularity into a top s and team in Europe. He's done kind of the same thing with these guys in North America. So if uh, I see this as Subliners taking game one, Wester probably take the next two games, and then we probably go to that hard point, and it's up to Subliners to bounce back. Right, and there it is. We love to hear the history about all these players. We get to watch it all unfold in our Call of Duty gameplay. Right now, we're going to hop right into the game. New York Subliners Academy facing off against Wester. And we're hopping right into map one. This matchup, I'm going to be joined by Ali. I'm so excited to get right into this crossroads because I know it's going to be a scrappy map this far already. We're going to be on board with gravity on the side of a Wester. Let's get this started, Fox. I'm so excited for this map to take place. So, kicking things off, we're looking through the eyes of gravity. Accompanied by Zap, he's down low with the AK-74. The first engagement between him and Spark, he ends up coming out on top. The Semtex still connects just behind him, finishing Venom off. The initial time goes to the Subliners Academy. We still have a Wester player in the mix. That's Zaptius, who's able to find a kill. Come out with his life and collect a second. Playing his life so well here, he knows that they're still pouring it on, but peeks out the challenge anyway. Subliners evening things up with the objective as they hop right back on the hill. Currently uncontested, unapproached, as they're still battling around the objective. Venom finds Frosty, and that could be enough support that his team needed 
to find the scrap time that is hard, but before we begin to rotate, you want to push through. You basically want to be where the Subliners Academy are at right now, right? They have that awesome setup for P2, and you already see players setting up for the flank and upsetting those pawns. Zaptius, player number four, gets it just as Frosty and Saints die just ahead of them, and they're spawning way, way out. Look at your mini map on the western end is where we see the Subliners players coming up from. The next wave of engagements go down, but not until Wester start to pull ahead of it. P1 very scrappy indeed. Not too much time going to either side, but Wester ended out on top as they did end up flipping out subliners from this point. Now, already getting a little bit of a comfy, comfy lead here on the side of Wester. Venom is three, six and three, excuse me, and they have held this for a good 30 seconds already. Subliners need to get up here as they can't lose spawns as well. So I'm gonna be paying attention to number one man gonna be gravity he's gonna try and make his way through p1 he's gonna try and catch saints in back but saints catches two on p1 huge kills out of him but unfortunately for subliners wester end up flipping out to get favorable response for next as well this is looking very scary for subliners academy big double kill right there but there's still one remaining wester player they finally fish him out and they should get the scrap time here however that does set up wester for the initial time on the new hard point and this one's so difficult to break you're in this cozy room with 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 these small entrance ways I, I think we're gonna see players try and funnel in all along from the side where p1 was but it's so tough to get through you're gonna have players pre-aimed and ready to loot opening up with a double kill regardless, an explosive entry into the hard point as he finds his third and stays alive. Spawn still in favor of Western. They're close to the action. They're gonna follow it up for sure. But the subliners, they keep pouring it on. The pressure's adding up. Beautiful breakout of subliners. Unfortunately, Zapius was left all on his lonesome in that hill. But of course, Wester answers right back as they flood in as the trades go out. Wester once again in control of the fire hard point. And not to mention that they still have spawns in the back for next, but subliners still trying to put up a fight right now. You can see how slow they're playing. They don't know about the players spawning behind them yet, though. So they're gonna try and get the spawns. Number seven, I remember that spawns. They're trying to catch Zapius from the back. He gets them and that spawns now in favor of subliners. This is huge for them, but Wester to have something to say about it, but Spartan Saint says, no thank you, see you across the map. Now, Western needs to play this very slow. This is a very difficult hill to break. It looks like they're going to try to make the push from P1. Unfortunately, a couple of them get taken down, but you can see the blue arrows on your map slowly closing in. They're making it up to rock. If they can get this kill onto Saints and Prolo, they can split spawns out once again, but they're not letting him. Number four, that's Zapdi. Zapdi gets the kill. They should start spawning out, but he gets taken down with the kill in favor of Wester, but this is tied game from 72 to 72, neck and neck, just as we expected. So, you gotta respect subliners in the beginning of this hill. They were able to play well inside of a split spawn, getting hit from both sides. They maintained spawns for this hard point. The one player that was able to get behind them and do a lot of damage, that's Zaptius at 15 and 8. They kill him just when it matters, and they, keep, they maintain their spawns for P4. Of course, we do see some time go over to Wester thanks to Gravity with a triple kill right there. But still, Subliners were able to pull themselves ahead by just a few seconds. Rotating back to the top of the list, we're here at P1, and Wester looks look poised to take point. Pay attention to Zapdius on your minimap. He is just holding down that mid lane. This should be a lot of time going the side of Wester if they play this properly, but... Gravity left alone a hill by himself with an XM4. He's gonna get tagged up. He has help in the back from Paul. He does go straight through, but now nobody is in hill. But that is three down for Subliners Academy. A good hold out of us so far. Sparthos making some noise in the middle, but he will end up getting traded out. Absolutely fantastic trades going outside of Wester. They're just not getting Subliners any headway, but again, they're only doing five points each. Trying to give any sort of leeway, but that is three members of Subliners down once again. Spawn still in favor of West Star. Doesn't look like we're seeing anybody from some lighters trying to join the rotation just yet. Saint still slowly trying to make his way behind Venom and he's gonna tag him up. Gravity goes up, he gets both of them. And suddenly, Saints behind enemy lines trying to set up for next. He's gonna try and get Paul in the bag of Paul knows he's there and Paul wins a gunfight. Absolutely fantastic two piece out of Paul to turn and burn on the Saints. West are looking fantastic. Paul, the flex player, certainly letting his presence be known with that XM4. He's been holding it down the past 120 seconds on the map and those back spawns that they needed for P2. However, they've all been disrupted. As you can see, three of the four Subliners Academy players are pouring through straight into the line of sight of Venom, who's able to tag up and finish off two on his own. Of course, we got support all around the objective as they're able to collectively clear out the Subliners infestation. 
still ahead by about 50 seconds. It has been a great minute or so of Call of Duty from Wester as a collective unit. Let's see Wester give up this 20 seconds here and start working on rotation. It looks like we're going to slowly start seeing that coming out of them on 2 one but... Subliner still trying to hit this last 20 seconds. That's going to be Saints trying to contest it just for a little bit. I almost wish he backed up just in case he decides to spawn out any of the Wester players, but looks like they're safe for now. So we got Subliner set up for next, but they need to get this whole 60 if they want to hopefully get back into this. Game. So rotating to the new hard point. This one's a tough one to break. But two still sat around P1. The rest of the team still sp coming up off spawn. They got some players cutting them off on the rotation, which should stagger the play just a little bit. And you can see 15 seconds uncontested so far for Subliners Academy. It is, of course, going to be represented in the score. And they still have yet to get through a true first wave of engagements. And Frosty pumping the brakes on them just a little bit there with the opening double kill. Again, forcing Wester to play off their back foot. The remaining players are outnumbered and have to wait for support. But they're spawning up so damn far away on the map. Even Paul with his double kill. It might not be enough unless he's able to get support from third. Venom comes through with the submachine gun. That's the kind of support they needed. And it bought them enough time to get to the objective. This could be a turnover here in favor of Wester. But keep in mind, they need those back spawns. They have to keep flooding through and succeed on the, on the gunfights in the back. That was a beautiful holdout of subliners, but they started to back up for new just a little bit too early, which allowed Western to get that half step onto the old hill and get that contest time. And number four, that's Zapdis. He's on top of the hill. He's just waiting for his teammate. He can just start killing people right now if he wanted to, but he will get kicked out. But again, this is starting to get a little scrappy. Number three, that's going to be Venom. He's going to try and hop rock here, maybe disrupt spawns just a little bit as he waits for his teammates. Seems that Prolet may got a little bit of a whiff of him, and not yet Venom. He's pushing up on Rock, he's waiting for his teammates. This is looking like it's all for Wester, as they're going to start spawning them out so deep. And number six, that's on Subliners. That's Prolet, he's across the map, but they still have yet to get Subliners out of the hill. But was a 50-point lead has not dwindled slightly because they were not able to break P4 fast enough. You really got to give it to Venom right there. That flank unfolded beautifully. He was able to clear out Subliners players, acting as a thorn in their side and allowing the remainder of Wester to pour through and collect this scrap time. They're up by about 30 seconds as we rotate to the next hard point. Right up top, P1, player seven, player five. That's Spart and Saints will be the closest ones to the objective, of course. We got to have that alley control. Saints finding that first kill is a good way to do it, but Venom at a distance is there to follow it up. Nobody's safe on the hard point as long as he's alive. They fish him out and shut him down. Spark with a double kill. But the action is back to unfolding on the objective as teams are flooding for control. Wester committed a little bit too much to that final break. They are now lost on not have to want people just yet, but they do have a comfy 20 point lead right now, so they do have a little bit of time to get back and he'll just take him down. Subliner's really starting to heat up here. I was going to say, you know, Gold Frosty, we need to see the Frosty that we saw yesterday, and it looks like he's starting to warm up now. Back and forth, it's a real battle. Wester in control, the hard point up by 20 seconds. We got Glow Frosty right around the corner doing some damage. Subliner's Academy also has access to good spawns for P2 here. So keep in mind to, as to what Spark does, holding in, holding in the back alongside Saints. That flank is wide open unless someone turns to cover it. Paul could certainly execute on it. Looks like he's going to do just that. I'm unsure of whether or not he was spotted by Pro Loot there. We'll have to watch that play develop as the remaining the remaining Wester, Wester roster comes over to support him. He finds a kill. That might have been the distraction they needed to blow this play wide open. Two players spawn far out, make it three. Wester's completely taking control of the hard point. With 45 seconds remaining, this is a great spot to be. Beautiful break out of Wester, especially going in the back, making sure they picked off both Rossi before funneling all their artillery in the front and Venom. It's not letting anybody get close to the hill, and Subliners are able to contest it for now, but Paul has something to say about that. And again, now they only need 40 more points to take this first crossroads, which is this is not what I was expecting. Subliners are spawning so, so deep, and number one, Gravity's already trying to hit a bit of a rotation, they're unable to make it, but. We need to see more of a team out of West Virginia. They cannot win it off of this hard point, so they're going to have to break into fire. Take a look at the damage coming out of players like Paul and Venom set at 34 kills. But we cannot forget Zapdius with 2 minutes and 14 seconds and counting in the hill as he also approaches 30. Moving over to the control of Subliners Academy. 
great spot for them to be in, especially with the fact that Western's only separated by 19 seconds for their victory. Pro loot with a big double kill. We've seen lots of this kill around the objective at opportune times. He catches one in the flank, and they need that to maintain these spawns. We saw just how easily Venom was able to unravel them previously. Pro loot not letting it happen right now. 30 seconds remain. Next offensive front is on the way. Saints knows they're just around the corner. All blue in the kill as Wester blow the setup wide open. Spawn still in favor of Academy. It's not enough. The Subliners Academy are able to hold on to the spawns, and as we rotate to the next hard point, they're still in a good position. But Wester still not stopping the fight. They've been able to get so much hill time, and they can certainly win it here, Ali. Two seconds away, no one able to contest. Wester's going to take it. Absolutely beautiful decision making out of Wester there on that last hard point. Venom tried to get into back to get those spawns and he got one and turned and burned on one of them. But once he got taken down, it was all right, we just need to focus all of our artillery at Big Door. And that's exactly what they did. They broke the hill, they won it off the of fire and didn't even have to worry about spawns. Absolutely incredible decision making. Yes, and again, we're see all day long, we've seen high intensity gameplay, high engagement games on hardpoint we're and certainly like seeing we're certainly seeing excellent competition so far in the challenger series ali do you have any takeaways from that matchup i was just going to say that wester have just been absolutely dominating our respawn and once again i thought that crossroads was going to be a little bit of a toss-up just because we have seen subliners play on it before we've seen them do incredible things on that map but Westar, I mean, they just absolutely shut it down and they just they proved again how good they are at respawn. And now I'm worried going into this, you know, subliners need to take this S&D, at least for a morale stance, from a morale stance. Yeah, but still looking back at that hard point, you have got to be thrilled if you're a Wester fan. I mean, you saw Paul with a commanding positioning on, on almost every hill in that game. You saw Venom being so disruptive with spawns. There were at least two or three key moments where he was able to uh, upset the enemy team's setup and, and build an advantage for his team to work with. On the opposite side of things for the subliner, there were still players like Saints that were able to sniff out some of these flanks. We also saw excellent gunfights go down on the hard point. But we have a set of replays for you here to take a look at all the action as it unfolded from start to finish. It was a real battle, and this is all of the bra this is the brawl happening. Saints opening up with some excellent ex excellent AK 74U gameplay. Spart also there to support for the team. I mean, I, I gotta say, I like watching these two sub players go at it together. I love watching Venom. I mean, he just gets behind enemy lines and just starts wreaking havoc. It's not even about the kills that he gets back there, but it's the attention that he draws to himself to pull back to enemy front lines for his teammates. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful stuff out of him. And I know we saw a little bit of a slow start from Glow Frosty and a slow start from Prolet, so hopefully in the later series we start seeing them begin to heat up because this is not the Subliners Academy that I feel like we've watched beforehand. Prolet going 16 and 25, Glow Frosty even across the board, you know, I'm expecting to see a little bit more going out of them later in the season. That's right. But as we see the scoreboard moving up, take a note of Zaptius milking a lot of that hill time and still slaying and, and contributing to the kill column. 30 kills alongside two of his other teammates. I mean, the tempo was just there. They had the pace. Wester really set the tone for that map. And subliners, they just had their plans foiled one too many times. Still, I'm expecting to see more of the same throughout the series. A highly competitive map uh, over and over again. Um, I mean, the Subliners Academy, they're certainly no joke, but Wester's got one up on them, Allie. Of course, but I mean, again, we're talking about the two top teams in NA right now. So honestly, anything can happen, especially when it comes into this S and D. And so we're going to take a look at the maps one more time. And we're going straight into a Miami S and D. Now, Fox, who who are you leaning towards going into this? Because I know I said Wester, they're so good at respawn and subliners going to have to capitalize on taking advantage of their S and D. So what are you thinking going into this? I think that we see NYSL back, uh, NYSL subliners, the academy team. I see them bouncing back and taking this map. Um, I certainly don't expect this to, this series to end early. I think we will go the distance. We'll see one, at least one of those two Moscow maps, and I think that this Miami S and D is going to be the one to do it. I've been watching Saints play Search and Destroy for years. He's around a stellar lineup that will support him in his ability in this game mode, and I think that all four of them should certainly put up a good fight. 
Absolutely. And I feel like for subliners to really take this S&D, they're going to end up having to shut down Venom and Paul, especially if they start going off the momentum from that win in that hard point, 250 to 196. If they got the momentum. They really need to worry about Venom and Paul on the map and Zapdius because, of course, he was having the time of his life. But I believe subliners, I believe they can forget about the hard point. And again, take advantage of the S&D. We'll see a close game here. Yeah, and it's not going to be easy, right? Wester's not going to make it easy for them. We've seen these players on the side of Wester, Gravity, Venom, Paul, and Zaptius playing in the Challenger series before. They're no joke in Search and Destroy. These guys can come together and put on a good show for us here in Game 2. So, any hot takes on Miami and what you might expect to see from these two teams on this map? I feel like I'm going to be seeing Saints and Spart up against Venom and Paul most of the map. And then a little bit of a Glow Fossey versus Gravity, a couple of 1v1s, little 2v2s. A little, you know, head-to-head -head going between those players. And I'm excited to see who comes out on top. For sure. The key to victory on this map oftentimes is piano control. That B-bomb site is where it all goes down. The submachine guns reign supreme, at least as far as indoor play goes. Of course, expect to see players like Paul on the outside with that XM4 looking up in the window. That should be an engaging battle to watch as we load into Miami. Beautiful and as map. we're loading Paul in, I am, <laughs> I am very excited to see Saints going top piano and wrecking havoc like we saw him earlier, hopefully, but we're on board with Zapdius first, and it looks like a very hard A push. I feel like that's something that I was not expecting going into Miami S&D as much as we have. There's a lot more A pushes than I feel like we would have been comfortable to see. Yeah, interestingly enough, today we've seen quite a lot of A hits on Miami SMD. Right off the bat, we see these guys take a trip past the pool, straight to the shoreline, and they find a first blood. Paul is able to connect with one onto Frosty. Player 5, Pro Loot, there on his own with plenty of enemies to deal with around the corner, including the bomb carrier. We'll see how he plays it. Russ, they're definitely in a position here to catch Spart off guard as he is on his lonesome in the top. And the two are happy to leave him, but he catches one. Will you able to catch Gravity? Ooh, got him right off the heady. You cannot let Spart take both of you down in that situation. 1v2 Zapdius will get taken out down and subliners able to turn that situation around. First blood went on to the side of Western, and I thought they were starting to collapse on the A side, and it was all over. The Those are out of Spart here. We're going to watch this two piece one more time. Beautiful shots. Oh, for sure. Holding the defensive positioning, that chest high cover in the window. He connects with every bullet on two different players. He's got his team there to follow up on the final kill. And now we see Subliners Academy. They're going to get their opportunity to play on offense after Spark certainly turning things around for them in the previous round. They got first blooded and even working at that disadvantage, Pro Loot stayed in position and they held it down on the A site. They're going to take their talents over to the B-bomb site, though, where they will be met with serious opposition. Three different players. Venom catches one off guard. There's the trade kill. But all hell might break loose here shortly as player four from Wester. That's Gravity is able to put down shots from ring. And now it's just Pro Loot in a one versus three, and he's shut down as well. This plan fell apart right from the get-go, Ali. That's the second time we've seen that really quick mid push out of stuff. Time to slip right past them. Was able to shoot a couple of them in the back and throw them a little bit off their game. But one one now in the series, and we've yet to see somebody take an offensive. So I feel like that might be a bit of a deciding factor on this Miami search and destroy. As you said, on the offensive, it's going to be Wester's chance to do it. Gravity's on a two streak after finding two in that previous round. It looks like they're going to be taking their taking themselves over towards the A site where they will be met with at least two players on the side of Subliners Academy. We do have Paul looking out for them on middle map, also keeping a watchful eye on any sort of flank shenanigans that might be set up by seven and eight Saints and Spark of the Subliners Academy, but nothing coming just yet. We're still looking to play for trades, look for that first pick along the shoreline there. No action unfolding just yet besides gravity from downtown. He connects with a few shots on Spartan, doesn't find much. So, Ali, really both teams so far in this S&D playing it slow, feeling each other out. Another slow A push out of West Side. I wish they would have gone for that little wrap that looked like Bomb Zapdius almost decided to do, but... Some of the trades going the way of Western, we are in a 3v2 now, so they do need to pick up Bomb and get that down as fast as possible. Saints able to pull out Paul from mid. 28 seconds on the clock. Bomb is still down. Venom or Gravity need to make the stretch forward. Stretch forward and see if we need to bomb down. No trade's gone out first. It is now 2v1. 
all up to glow frosty bombs going down but wester do end up catching him as he's going to get the peak i was worried for a second i was worried for a second because the bomb started to make its way towards a and once it got there for me two of them were there they almost looked like they made the decision to wrap but they ended up committing to the a side and ended up working out in their favor in the end played the trays very well for sure and held down the site we see west to take the first offensive round win of this search and destroy where they find themselves up 2-1 on this map if you're just tuning in wester did take the hard point it's a crossroads hard point lots of back and forth I'm looking forward to seeing more of that in the Search and Destroy here. Two players on a three streak. That's Venom and Gravity. On the opposite side of things, Subliners Academy is going to have Pro Loot as their bomb carrier. Again, moving towards the A-bomb site, leaving one behind. Behind That's Spart looking out for the flank. This and of course, we him. have the benefit of being able to see through walls, Alley. So we know that these three <laughs> players from Academy could just... You know, hold, hold down the gas, go straight to the A site. But of course, they need to figure out where Wester is sat. They had one player originally, but the call, as an audible, seems to be sending some more players closer towards the A site as they didn't hear much at B. Unfortunately, they didn't move at A fast enough. So now there's three players from Wester rotated over for subliners. But we've seen Saints do this before. We're going to see him do it again as he waits in beach. Waiting to trap his prey, but unfortunately teammates are starting to get taken down. There's our first blood on the side of Wester. is a 4v3. Glow Frosty trying to catch gravity, trying to catch any movement. Bomb still needs to go down, though. It is 27 seconds. It is down on the site. Wester needs to start making a move now if they want to collapse before this bomb goes down. Spar able to get it down, but Saints will get taken down for it, and that is two. Now down on the side of Subliners is Glow Frosty in a 1v3. He has to watch over Bomb, but they know where he is. This would be an absolute miracle. We will get taken down by Venom. That Bomb will end up getting defused. Yep, and so right there we saw Subliners Academy working it as slowly as they can, trying to get up to the A site. Wester just saw the play coming, shifted some plays around, had a great defense around the A site midway through that round, and even as Saints was able to sneak up past the boat and find a kill, it just was not enough. They did not have the proper footing on the site to hold it down. As you see, Gravity was able to comfortably pick them off from this position. So that will be a bomb defuse. And we see Wester go up yet another round. 3-1. Venom and Gravity still on that streak. Right on board with Gravity. Looking like a hard A push out of Wester once again. I feel like we have yet to see any commits to B bomb site, which is a bit shocking considering these teams. I definitely would expect a little bit more of a scrappy garage going down, but I guess not yet. And so now we do see the Subliners Academy electing to play up a bit closer towards the boat out in the water. And we also have one in the house just next to them. Player number five, Pro Loot, looks to be the closest one in the mix. He plays his cards right. It could be similar to what we saw in the first round where he's able to catch someone off guard. Oh, they might just line up perfectly here for him. Finds one kill on the bomb carrier. Connects with the second pro loot in a stellar position. And just like that, the house of cards has fallen. And Subliners, <laughs> Subliners Academy finds themselves their second round win. And look, this is all what made it happen. Beautiful two-piece out of him. Subliners definitely putting up a fight here. They are down by one round, but not out just yet. Gravity, though, four and two. Venom, five and three. Always a bad day to see your bomb carrier die first. That's some feels bad right there. It definitely puts you in a much tougher situation than you were before, Fox. Bom bombing down and having to pick it up again is never a good time. But on board with Pro Loot, looks like he's going to try and make his way top piano. Finally seeing a bit of a B commit here, but unfortunately three players are here. So this is going to be a little bit of a difficult push for them. Utility out. Oh, he did get destroyed. Semtex just out of range of the trophy system, and no, so no protection for them and piano. We do see Spark taken out by the headshot. So, Ali, we got Subliners Academy committed to the B site in the three versus four. This is going to be a tough one to take. Absolutely, Venom trying to catch some movement. It is still a four v two now. Subliners are down. Forty seconds on the clock. Oh, no Saints is up there. Saints has been wrecking havoc and top piano. Fortunately, hasn't had any help from his teammates. The information is there. I'm shocked nobody from Western started in rotation to try and get them both in the back, but 
need to go down anyway. That is an absolute wall bang out of Wester. Now, four and two. Wester up. This is not that city I was expecting to get out of Wester, honestly. I feel like the blinders, I was definitely expecting to try and take advantage here, but Wester is just showing why they're one of the top teams in, it, in NA. Certainly, I'm loving watching the methodical s &D play. We're seeing them kind of catch Subliners Academy off guard quite a few times. And, of course, taking full advantage of power positions with their ARs. Side of subliners, three and four, three and five, three and four, three and five across the board, even. And they need to see somebody step up a little bit here. No real superstars shining out on side of subliners. And that just means there's nobody to match Venom. You know, Venom's been an absolute problem on the map. And nobody, unfortunately, from subliners has been able to shut him down. It's a beach trip once again. Three players for the side of West are taken to the taken to the A site. One on the flank. That's going to be Paul. No one's home though. No one electing to go for it just yet. We haven't seen much of that in this search for sure on Miami. So a little bit of increase today, but as it stands, most of the action is unfolding on the A site where Frosty is cozy. We saw him able to find a double kill from this position in prior rounds. He's got the knowledge of the enemy team pushing right up on this site in front of him. Let's see what he does with it. Wester a bit stuck out here on beach as subliners have the information to just close around on them. I emphasize the same kind of position out beach site though, as the teammates could really use him. Gravity getting caught out, but not down yet. It's still a 4v4, 20 seconds on the clock. Bomb will go down. Subliners have yet to really put themselves out there to try and get them off the of bond, and now they've given all control up to Wester. What was looking like a perfect situation for Subliners. I mean, they are just falling apart one by one. Zane finally makes a low rotation, but gets caught out in mid. Wester is absolutely keeping composure here in a 2v1. Bomb down. Glow Frosty stuck in a 1v2. Once again, can he do it? The fox must come out of his hide. Frosty was so cozy inside that building, but with the bomb planted, that offense has turned into a defense, and Wester takes full advantage of it, finding themselves at map point. It is 5-2. Wester is poised to go up 2-0 in the series. And, Ali, I gotta say, from the point of this plant, I get, guess we get to see it as the best play here at the end of the round, but they were able to find first and second blood after planting the bomb. It seemed like the Subliners Academy just came out too late and got caught with their pants down. No, absolutely. They are in a perfect situation to catch Wester off guard, but unfortunately they just they were too slow and they didn't take action and they allowed them to they allowed Wester to get that control of that A side and get that bomb down and I mean, Saints, again, he didn't rotate when they already knew Bomb was down and, ev and everybody from Wester was over on beach side. So that was definitely an unfortunate situation for Subliners Academy. Numbers on the board for Wester. Subliners Academy gets another opportunity on offense as they commit four players to the B site. Those two lone players at A for the side of Wester, Zaptius and Gravity, are going to be left to their own vices. We got to see how long this play takes to unfold, though, because they could elect to rotate, and that could spell trouble. There is one player on the flank, Frosty, waiting for it to happen. Gunfights engaged. Gunfights engaged on site as Spark gets the better of him. Fantastic first blood out of Spark. Now they need to start taking over this bomb site, and that's exactly what they're doing. They need to get bombed down. Not only a 2v3 of favoring subliners. Beautiful, beautiful B site capture by them. That's exactly what I was waiting and looking to see is for them to just take control of that bomb site. That's exactly what we're going to watch here. one more time. And I mean, just just look at look at the follow up from Saints. No hesitation, coming in for the trade. He gets the double kill. Con constantly impressed by this guy. I mean, he's 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 been playing at such a high level for so many years. We've seen this man on the COD Champ stage a number of times. And now we're watching him take it, watching him win his takeover of the Challenger Series here. And it's I an said offensive it was opportunity be Venom, for the and he's team. Nine and four. And I'm nine and four, strongest one in the lobby at the moment. Also on the winning team at map point. All four players going towards the beach this time. They're met by players outside. Frosty connects with one onto gravity. He has plans to stay. He has dropped his trophy system on the boat, not going anywhere. He's got three players just around the corner. Proly once again sneaking up. He could find some opportune positioning here. After electing to use his tacticals and lethals, he doesn't connect with much. And it looks like the Western players actually back up before he can do any real damage. Behind them, though, will be Spartan Saints, and that's not a duo I want to face in the dark. 3v4, I mean, you see the yellow arrows are surrounding Western. I mean, one little sound, one little piece of information, and they will be absolutely collapsed on 
and here we go. Golden Frosty starting to heat up. He will find Venom. Trades going out. That is now 2v3. Subliners. This is this is a going down in the spawn. This is like the last place I would expect S and D be going down. But Zapdius catches Polo with his pants down, and Paul catches Saints. Look, Subliners. This was supposed to be easy, but West they're not going down without a fight. Glow Frosty, it's all of you. Unfortunately, not able to win that gunfight. Again, Wester has just been able to turn situation around and around again and again. We saw Frosty chose for his hill to die on the boat. Starts off the round there, finishes it there as well. Unfortunately for him, it's a round win for Wester as they find their second map in the series. And what was an incredibly methodical search and destroy played out by both teams. We saw rotations and audibles being called. We saw excellent sneak plays, especially from players such as, uh, such as Saints. And I think that overall, it was just a very well s and played on both sides and Wester was able to close it out in the end, Ali. Absolutely, Wester has been playing fantastically and I look on the side of subliners and, you know, I was looking at Glow Frosty to kind of heat up, you know, again, he started to heat up late in the crossroads and I wanted him to come out hot when it came to the s and but once again, he started to heat up just a little too late and he got stuck in a lot of, you know, 1v2 situations, unfortunately for him. and. I mean, Wester, I mean, they get into such a tight position where they are just surrounded, they're down in lives, and they always somehow find a way to turn it around. I mean, it's been absolutely incredible to watch Fox. Yeah, and it, 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 for sure, we saw that for at least six rounds in that game. The rounds where it didn't work out so well, it was actually the Subliners Academy with players like Pro, with players like Pro Loot set up on these very sneaky flanks, finding that first and second blood. I mean, we saw how he was able to be integral in a part of the round that ended in seconds. We got some replays here. We can actually take a look at how all of the action unfolded for both sides in this matchup. So what I'm expecting to see is a whole lot of pro loot, a whole lot of saints, maybe a little bit of Paul sprinkled in there. Is there anything <laughs> stood out to you in this map, Ali? Um, again, it was just the fact that Wester would always be in a situation where, you know, on textbook paper, I'd be like, no, there's just no way they're making it out of this. But, you know, they end up, they always end up turning it around. I mean, especially Venom going eight and three right now. I believe he ended like 10 and three. I mean, he was a superstar on that map, you know, and I feel like on the side of Subliners, I didn't really see, you know, anybody really stepping up to the next level to match him. Yeah, I mean, Venom was nasty, right? He was always leading the pack far and away from most other players in the lobby, set up for those streaks. Um, it was just an awesome game from the side of Wester as they find themselves up 2-0 in this series. So what was a competitive hard point turned into, uh, at least in the later stages of the game, not so much of a competitive search and destroy. As we get into control here, Ali, do you have any thoughts on the upcoming map? Um, subliners just, they need to kind of forget about the first two maps at this point. I feel like I said that before, that they need to forget about the crossroads. Well, now they just need to forget about everything. They need to work towards their reverse sweep here, and they just have to take it one map at a time because they're down 0-2. I mean, again, they're in their heads right now, you know, we're considered one of the top teams. They're going against another top team you know, that we probably considered that, you know, we were supposed to be the best at. So going into this checkmate, I definitely hope to see a little bit of a switch turn out of subliners. Yeah, and a team like Subliners and Wester with so few maps dropped, I wonder if Subliners has even found themselves in this position before. 0-2, right? This is what happens when you go up against the toughest com competition in your region. This is a matchup so many have been anticipating, and Wester, they're looking to try and close it out early. Of course, my prediction earlier was that we see at least one of the two Moscows. I definitely think that we see Subliners Academy bounce back in the checkmate control. What are your thoughts, Allie? I sure hope we do see them bounce back, but we're loading in the game right now and checkmate control. I Again, I'm favoring Wester just because of how good and how dominant they've been at respawn. But again, it wouldn't be any less surprising for subliners to turn it around here. All right, if you're just tuning in, Wester's looking to make short work of Subliners Academy. They're up 2-0 in the series. If they want to end at 3-0, this is the map to do it. Checkmate control. We're looking for the eyes of Venom. Who's taken for the first engagement in plane? He finds Saint. He connects with him before the Semtex can do too much damage, but Spart is there to follow it up again. Trades going back and forth as we get on to point A. Zapdius is able to be the one to do it. He's still looking to toss some utility towards the plane. They understand how important that part of the map is to the capture of either point. Even up in the A corner, as the blood the bloodbath is still going down. It's a real brawl on point right now. Final remaining player is number seven. That's Saints in position to defend the point. But behind him, we have Paul and Zapdius looking to try again. 
Right off the bat, we saw the split push out of Venom just to kind of distract them a little bit in playing that allowed his teammates to get that first ticket A. And Subliner is an amazing recoil coming back, but getting them off that point. But A is almost over halfway done now, and they need to make the decision if they're going to save it or not. And it looks like 8 and 600 minimap. They're going to make a little bit of an attempt. But number 6, Goldfrost, he's just decided to push up in the spawn. Maybe get some spawn kills. He catches Venom. And now Wester are going to have to worry about him, you know, shooting them in the back. Yep, Zapti is about to be met with some adversity here. Two players converging onto the point around him, and they're able to stop tick progression here. That's got to be huge. You have to be thanking Saints right now if you're a Subliners Academy fan at home. But just around the corner is Zapti for another attempt. Quick glance at the life pool differential. Just three, just two. Not a difference between these two teams. But Wester still looking to take back control of the eight site. It's not going to happen without a fight as Pro Luke slides through and takes down Gravity. Paul falls next. They're outnumbered. He's pushing up to apply the pressure to their spawn on the flank. Pro Luke staying alive here is a huge problem if you're a Wester player. They need to sniff him out. They need to shut him down. They need to get to point A and make some magic happen. They have 15 seconds left on the clock, Ali. Fantastic. Fantastic push in the back from Frosty. Give his teammates time to stop that A push. But not only did that, there's only 11 seconds left on the clock now. And full push out of Wester again to B. But if they're not able to get this time in right now at A, they are going to lose this first round. Saints with two to shut it down. But Wester is still managing to stay alive. Even after all these trades, lives are still 9 to 12. Sublanders are up and live. They take down three. But Wester answer with the back. So nobody's close enough to a point. So we're going to see this first round of control go to the side of Sublanders Academy. Yeah, and right there what we saw on A was just none of the Wester players won their gunfights on point, right? They used their utility, they jumped out to engage, they just got gunned, and in the closing moments when they needed that tick pro progress, that's not where it can happen. So, Subliners will close out this first round protecting both points on checkmate control. He said it was going to get interesting. out of stains now it makes you wonder if this is possibly going to be a defensive game and just you know whoever ends up taking that first offense just kind of runs with it but zapti is three and five on the side of west they're a little bit of a slow start out of him but subliners i mean saints going nine and four pro six and six already a very hot start out of them so i'm wondering if they can keep this momentum going for the rest of this control as we expect to see saints be the first one to break control let's look through his eyes as he pushes through plane on the opposite side, Ruby Zapti is still gun engagements already going down on the A point as well. Frosty firing from downtown into the plane. He's going to have that objective Woo! progress. Saint stays alive in, plane, in the plane as well. And this could be huge for their map positioning, right? Because we know that West is going to flood straight through onto A point to try and contest it. But with them having middle map control, they, ha they should have all of the support they need. Beautiful shots out of Gold Frosty, and they do manage to solve the progression at A at one tick, and I feel like we're seeing kind of a repeat of the first round, but Wolves are right now. Paul trying to make some noise, but Wester do get wiped. It's 23 to 24. Subliners up on life count currently. Gravity to try and get playing control. He will get shot in the back, but A is getting D ticked currently. Nobody is on any point. I mean, it is so back and forth, Fox. I mean, again, I feel like we're seeing a replay of our first round. Oh yeah, West is keeping it up. They're definitely sticking it to him. Uh, it looked like Subliners Academy might have been set up to send someone around for a flank. They had Saints in the middle map for support on the point, but Wester just kept fighting back. Um, we're still finding ourselves in that situation again, though, where Gravity has to find an answer for it. Player on point with the trophy system is smart. He guns him, cannot finish the second because he's tagged up, so heads up play by Paul to finish the job there. We can try and remove some of this tick progress, but he will be met with a few enemies in the coming moments. As support of the remaining Western players as they push up on the plane. One still alive that they need to deal with, and that's Pro Loot. Zapti is also behind a couple of players. Let's see what he does with this flank. Venom so slippery, managing to get past plane, get a couple of kills, and allow the rest of his teammates to push up. And what we thought was going to be A gone is now only 25 seconds in subliners. I mean, they are caught up in their spawn. They have no way out. Prolu might be able to slip by, but Paul is backing up just to make sure he doesn't have the chance. They have 15 seconds to get into this point. Since Paul almost let him sprint by, he gets Prolu, though. Beautiful shots out of Paul. He knows Spart is there. Again, 12 seconds. They are managing to get to the B point though, they might see a tick go through there, and West is trying to fall apart a little bit here. They need to commit to one of the sites because subliners are starting to make their way towards that A to get that final tick. Tick progress on B. Frosty finds the first tier. He's got players around the corner. Gravity Peach shoots one between the eyes as he takes down Frosty. Two kills for Wester, currently outnumbering the remaining Academy players. 
and they stop the tick progress on B. Looking over at A though, they are damn near close to the completion on that third period. Wester players looking to come through and make a difference. Three of them swarming the site right away, and Wester finds themselves a defensive round win. I do believe this will definitely come down to whoever gets the offensive win first. I mean, both teams, again, it was just like we were watching first round on play. play. Glowfrost, you're going to see a couple of good shots out of him. He has really turned the gears up during this control, and I feel like that's what we needed early on to see really good contests coming out of subliners. Neither team seems to really be able to get a confident foothold onto A Street. Typically what we see is you push up, you're able to go to the op to the opposing team side of A Street, maybe fire at them a little bit on spawn, um, have some have some players set up on the middle map plane, and then maybe send someone in for a flank. But it seems like they, uh, they, they really can't get much more than one player on site with a trophy and maybe someone hovering around middle map and the rest of your team on respawn, right? It's not, it's not, it's not a very sturdy setup because of how high, high engagement we're seeing this hard control play out to be. I'm almost upset that Subliners did not see this one coming as Venom went mid once again to try and distract them on the B side while the rest of his teammates took over A. And again, this is A almost already gone over an and a half. Spark tried to have something to say about it. And then the Cavalry comes in, a tick will go in through A. And I mean, we're watching this again and again and again. I mean, Venom got taken down. Subliners answered very quickly. And now Wester, I mean, they're stuck in their spawn. They're going to try and make this commit towards this B side and hopefully catch Subliners in the back. Right, and here we go, we see this happening actually. Frosty pushing up to closer towards the enemy's A side. He's gonna be hugging that corner. He can spot players out to the grenade. He can catch someone. Maybe trying to get towards the street as he does just that with a double kill. Frosty holding his ground. This is a great spot for him to be in terms of defending A. Of course, dust off those two trophy systems. We don't need them there. And we reset and do it all again. He's gonna be met with more opposition from the side of Wester this time. And repositioning, he still finds another kill. Frosty is someone in this series that knows how to plant his feet and make his presence known. Wester down almost 10 lives now. I mean, they need to commit to a bomb site. I mean, there's 17 seconds and you could to commit oh. to either A or B. And Glow Frosty just not letting a single person pass that cargo bin. Saints just chilling and playing here. He hasn't had to do too much. But now under him are three players on the side of Wester. They need to cap this point. They have 6.9 seconds. They don't know and then they turn to get him, throws the nade out, but the trophy will shut him down. And now all of a sudden, this is turning towards the tide of Western. I mean, subliners are all coming off spawn. A and B are both getting progressed. We're probably going to lose A here. Subliners, I mean, what was looking all their way. I mean, one wipe, and suddenly this is a different round. I didn't think they were going to topple the stone wall. I mean, he, Frosty was able to stay there and stay alive for so long. Took them a couple of attempts, but Wester, just like that, they are able to turn the point over, awarding them another minute on the clock. Massive progress onto the B control point. You can see they're already halfway through tier three, not working away at their their 60 seconds awarded at all just yet. Pro loot once again, staying a nuisance in their face with some machine gun. He's going to be met with multiple Wester players. The team shot comes through. Paul with a double kill. Collecting two for his own in a great spot to do it too as his team looks to finish out the round here. Wester gets a point on the board. Venom was so huge there in the end. I don't know if you saw him just chilling on plain steps, but he just kept playing them off the spot and that forced two of Subliner's players to kind of back up and look for him. And I mean, his teammates got the two kills in the front and boom, that was it. The B was gone and never gave them the chance. I mean, it was a huge play out of Venom for sure. I mean, you see the intensity when we're looking through the POV of someone like Paul, right? Him and Venom are clearly on the same page. He knows what he's they're obviously working off of wonderful communication. He's snapping and just shutting them down in an instant. Really just Wester firing on all cylinders, cylinders at this point. We got Venom on a four streak. We got Paul on a three streak. Coming off a of spawn kill and they got a feel pretty good as they move into this final round. The wall bang, he's able to stop Saints. Playing control so far in favor of Wester. There's just one player to meet, and that's Spart who came up top. He's stay on board with Venom as he tries to get behind enemy lines. I think he just saw Saints running in the plane. He will shoot him in the back. I mean, again, absolute playmaker out of Venom. A little bit of progression towards Angel, but they are unable to get the tick. And this is where it starts turning into a really dangerous round because Venom is now in your back spawn and forcing you to spawn deep into those cargoes. And a minute left on the clock. They have some time to work with lives at 25 to 24, pretty even across the board. But you have no progression on either side. And that first break is so important. Low Frosty with the feet down 23 and 15. 
23 and 15, and Frosty gets through the A barrier. He gets stopped just as he gets on site by Semtex. Two kills for Wester as they set up defensively on both A and B. No one shall pass. Saints comes up on his own. No follow-up. Spark also pushing in alone. We're going to see staggered plays coming out of Subliners Academy now as Wester starts to pull away in the life advantage. They are six ahead of Academy. 25 seconds remain on the clock. At this point, Wester is holding down and they can deliver Subliners Academy their first real loss. That is absolutely insane. What a clean 3-0 it was. I mean, once they took that offensive, I mean, they are just spawn trapping Subliners. There's nothing they can do. They can't get close to the point. Streaks are being called. I mean, absolutely beautiful gameplay out of Western. Venom had the game of his life. Paul really turned it up there in control as well. Gravity, we saw him putting up some numbers. I mean, beautiful series out of Western. Wester came out fire and they really they kept the intensity all three maps, foot on the gas, and did not let up once. Paul, especially, I want to give him a big shout out, but I feel like everyone in the team got their time to shine. It was always someone's turn to set up for a flank, just hold a position and find a multi kill. Spaceman, you were watching it from the side there. What stood out to you? Why was Wester so successful in delivering a devastating 3 0 to the Subliners Academy? You guys remember that weird guy who said this was going to go the distance? I know. That guy's weird. Uh, this <laughs> was wild, right? I, I don't know who we're talking about, but this was wild. Um, in game one, I, I was sitting, what, tweeted it out. I said, uh, subliners, they were struggling because, you know, Prolu couldn't help contribute to the slight calm. Glow Frosty, when he popped off, they had control of fire. Then you're looking at P4, which they struggled to hold. But a lot of it was gravity, and a lot of it was just the, the, the strength of the Western lineup. Venom and Zapdius were absolutely contributing. And here's a look at the map layouts as well. And the SND was just a one-handed show. Like, I, I know it was back and forth for a while, but let's be honest. Wester were in full control the entire time. And then that was the closest in the control. That was the closest map we saw in this series. But even then, like, after games one and two, I, I, I texted one of the European commentators, and I was like, well, this is not how we expected it to go. <laughs> and it's true, because the slaying from Wester, I, it's not that we doubted them, or specifically, I will call myself out. It's not that I doubted their capabilities, but I said, look, their control looks good in scrims. Their SD always looks good but i was worried about that map one but aside from really uh pro loot having a slow hard point and and spark having to carry a lot of that load i mean wester just came out better like all all across the board on, on defense on control and their snd on the routes the recognition of when to isolate players like glow frosty towards uh towards the beach on top of the boat and being able to move in uh, again it, even that control right the defensive rounds you you miss it you turn back in two seconds and it's like 20 to 13 life count and you're like okay uh wester are just the better team right now they, they just played every single game better in that series wasted no time and they made short work ali any takeaways from the series so far for me personally i saw paul stand out i haven't heard you guys speak too highly of him here i'm curious to see what you think about the squad I definitely saw Venom and Paul kind of as like the duo going into this. I definitely had high hopes for both of them. And I know in the recap, it definitely looks like a blowout. I mean, come on, six and three. I mean, three and one control. And I mean, the hard point 250 to 193. But as we were casting it and watching it, it didn't feel like a blowout, you know? And I feel like that that's a kind of a look up for subliners. They still have so much room to improve. And I'm sure this is a fire they're going to be needing to hopefully, you know, play Wester later on, you know, whenever that may be. But I do talk about, you know, the superstars of the series, and I'm looking at Venom just because I was watching him on the map and as a player myself, some of the plays we were making, I mean, I'm sure production saw, I just had a huge smile on my face the whole time, but. Certainly exciting stuff. We got more action for you here tonight for the Call of Duty Challenger series. Let's take a look at the schedule. As you can see, we just concluded with our matchup of Wester facing off against Subliners Academy. And it has certainly been an exciting one. Earlier today, we also saw Orbalus face off against the Tate Esports Rams, beating House Tarth. The Spanish team went all the way to game five. And this final match will be brought to you by Ali and Spaceman, mid maps and higher. Do you guys have any initial thoughts on this matchup for the NA region? Oh, uh, Mr. Midmaps, again, a team that on paper should be top three in North America, arguably, but still are struggling to put it together. They grabbed their first series win yesterday. But uh, I look at higher and another another team that in general, just in terms of composition, uh, Zinx, Mobile AR, just phenomenal talent all around. Uh, Exotic's kind of like the guiding underhand of this team. He has the veteran experience to be able to guide these young rookies. Uh, Proto there as well, right? And Mayhem. So like there, there's a lot of flex talent on this squad and they're and their subs can certainly light it up, but uh, it's, you know, uh, this is going to be an interesting one because Mr. Bid Maps, there's so much to be desired with that squad, but they just, they kind of struggle to put it together.
I can hear the sadness in your voice. It's like talking to a disappointed <laughs> father whenever you have to mention Mr. Big Maps. Allie, do you share a similar sentiment? A little bit. Um, when it comes to Mid Maps, especially when we watch them, I feel like I see such superstar moments out of them, and you just you get that glimmer of hope, but they're just never able to close it out. So I feel like hopefully, at least in this upcoming series, we start seeing them close out maps a little bit better, you know, and having those superstar moments throughout the entire thing. But I mean, higher things like Frodo Mayhem. I mean, I feel like we're seeing the battle of the vets right now on the side mm -hmm. of Mid Maps with Draza, Fellow, Decime, and Naga, and I'm just I'm excited to see these two go at it. It's a dramatic night. We're seeing the the uh, Subliners Academy get delivered their first 0-3 victory. We're going to cut to a quick break and come back with you for more action for the Call of Duty Challenger series.
Hello and welcome back to the Call of Duty Challenger series. It is Elite Week here in 2021, and I'm joined by Space and Ali. We've had some exciting matchups unfold tonight. More recently, we saw the Subliners Academy get delivered their first loss and in 3-0 fashion at the hand of Wester. We've had some exciting matchups today, and I'd like to hear your thoughts about the upcoming one. We got mid-maps facing off against higher. Space, what do you think about mid-maps coming into this one? Oh, my my fatherly <laughs> disappointment now. Listen, the, Mr. Midmaps, there is a uh, there's a there is a solid top four team under this this the skin of this team, right? If we talk about like maybe like a marble that needs to be chiseled and worked on from all angles and, and underneath there is a solid piece of statue. That's the sentence. Uh, that's what I see this team being. They, they can eventually make their way towards the top four conversation, but there needs to be a change like flat out. There's just something's not working. And the problem is that there is too much talent on this team for this to be a problem and you're running out of time for it to be a problem. So uh, this is actually an important matchup, right? Maybe standing wise not so much but this is a morale matchup if you don't come out and play good call of duty if you don't come out and show that you are a good team at least on the surface there needs to be a team change flat out i know we're only into week two but it's getting out of hand thank you space spaceman we got the <laughs> caster disappointed father sculptor what an incredible talent you are ali what are your thoughts about their about their competition here as we load into the map I could ramble on about how I'm excited to watch Des and Draza play, but how about we just walk right into the map? Let's just see what's going down. We're going to say bye to Fox. See you later. Space, ah, are let's you do ready it. for the fatherly disappointment yet again? Oh, I'm just ready. There's no free game, so I don't have to say, oh, I'm so disappointed. Let's just get into the series, Allie. Yeah, like, I just actually it. want to talk about it. But listen, here's the interesting thing about higher, right? And besides the way, Wester being number one seed now because they 3-0 sweep their way through Subliners Academy, the standouts on higher for me are Zinx and Exotic. Zinx is a mobile AR with great instincts, and he constantly finds himself in the top of the leaderboards, while Exotic, like I said earlier, is that steady bottom hand of this team. Experience for years, no massive event places, but they constantly finding a good talent of young players and he can build them up to be something special. I need everyone to contribute on the other side for Mr. Midmaps. You just got to slide. You got to slide. Forget about the disappointment. Des and Draza right off the bat just said, you know, we don't even need our other teammates. Draza 5-0 and o to start off this crossroads hard point. They have the spawns. They have the first time in the P1. I mean, already straight off the bat, Midmaps looking fantastic. A little bit of a slow start on the side of higher. Mayhem going 0-3. Proto 0-3. Hopefully we see them start to warm up here soon, Space. You know, in the past couple of years, by past couple, I mean last year, because since the pandemic, it's felt like three years stacked on top of each other. But Draza has exploded to becoming probably the number one. Yes, he was picked up, but number one prospect still for the future of the CDL. I think this kid should be a, at least on a, a, a sub spot for a pro team, if not a starting roster. He's an all-around phenomenal player. Then you look at Exotic on the other side, who's able to shut down two now in a four spree of his own. Mayhem yet to find a kill off spawn. But in general, Mr. Midmaps have all the talent in the world as we rotate now all the way over to lower annex for P2. You have Draza, Nagafen, and Fellow, a amateur champion with Triumph Gaming, even at Diamond Con on that roster, now on Subliners Academy. Like there is just there's so many different teams or and players that can be fitted into this Mr. Maps roster. They have all the talent to get it done. Now I'm unfortunately following following death to his own trophy, but somehow managing to get them spawned because of that. Again, Midmaps find themselves in the last 12 seconds, which they have no business getting as Hire has the spawns for old, and they were all four stacked inside of it. But Hire need to start working on these rotations as once again they are late to slow up into this fire hill. Exotic though, trying to have something to say about it. Already a really hot kick out of him. He's 11 seconds carrying the heavy backpack that is his team right now. The first one's inside the hill for higher. It will be exotic in Proto. Proto will drop two in the kill feed for Mr. Midmaps. One traded out, and the follow up start to come in. The numbers quickly falling. Take that three in a row, exotic on a six streak again. 15 and six, one with four, one with six. That adds up to 10. So far, racking up kills left and right in about 23 seconds and counting in the hill. 52 to 49. Still 30 to fight over, but we're looking at the munitions hard point ready to pop in about 30 or so seconds. And you have to have the entry kills to go with it. It's Draza and Decimate combined for one or two. Nagafen will find himself inside the hard point at two and seven. And if he's running that AR, you need him to start stepping up in the slaying column to match the subs. I mean, that one-man army that was exotic, able to break that hill for his team, not only to put them back in the game, but did also give his team time to get back and get those spawns. But mid-maps are answering right back. Unfortunately, 1v4 doesn't work out too well in Cold War as the spawns 
do go back into the favor of mid maps and they're gonna get this first couple of times but Pyre's only down 20 seconds they can start slowing this down and start playing a little bit more around this hard point number seven on the map that's exotic again getting spawns for his team i mean he is doing it all slaying objective spawns you you name it he's already got it on lock 79 to 58 mid maps so let's start from out of thin three nine we can get up a little bit at that or just sit in the middle at this point Hello, though, making his way through top fires, slipping past, using to get them off spawn. Draza gets taken down, though. Looks like this final 25 seconds are gonna go in the favor of Hyre. We're gonna be looking at the second set of rotations for P1 to pop again. Only four hills on crossroads. You guys know the deal, but in the pregame, talk a little bit about the talent on both sides of the rosters. And again, if you're talking about just wall to wall, gun to gun, who's gonna win the gunfights? Mr. Midmap should be favored in this moment. So far, they're doing a good job. The lead goes back to higher. Exotic will fall, and Zinx will clean up Draza. So Draza out of the equation. 15 and 11. Nagafen, triple negative, having a very slow start to game one. Let's go back to P1. Who's gonna fight for tank control? It's gonna come up to Proto, trying to work his way into the hill. I think he spots that trade. regardless. Zix going to be able to pick up two. And now you look at the opening time going the way of higher. Still on board with Zinx. Looking for one player coming to catwalk. It's going to be Fellow who's going to run into a couple of utility. We'll throw one out of his own. Tags up one, but no connection. So doesn't know that Zinx is roaming outside. And now we go back to Mayhem. Picking up one on the outside. Second player will drop in the in the hill and Fellow picks up one. So trades go back and forth. Not a lot of great time for higher, but still they're gaining that lead. Midmaps unfortunately tried to make the gamble of going for the rotation rather than getting the first couple of seconds on P1. And they're definitely suffering for that a little bit as we do see a lead change on the side of higher. And Midmaps, though, definitely trying to have something to say about that as the last 15 seconds will go their way, but now they're late on rotation. But somehow, some way, the team presence on that side of the map ended up flipping out higher. So now, not only is the last couple of seconds going on side of Midmaps, they also have the first couple of seconds in New Hill. And for seven Iron Man map, that's exotic yet again. He's been a superstar. He has slipped behind enemy lines he's taking down two can he take out the third he can that is three down exotic single handedly breaking the customization from mid map we're gonna have to see them start to shut him down soon this is the third time we've seen Exotic on a streak of three or more. So, la racking up kill after kill, right? 14 now on these streaks. A minute 10 in the hill. He's been single-handedly carrying this team through the hard point. Really the big reason why they hold this lead. 12 and 17 for Mayhem. Proto, 11 and 12. Zinx, 15 and 13, doing all that he can on the other side. You need more from Nagama. Can't say much more than that. Exotic with another 2P, six in a row. Can he find seven? He will not do so. Had not a lot left in the clip, but still almost looked like he was going to be able to pull that one. Updraza combining with teammates there. They're going to get the hill time. 15 or so seconds to fight over. Scrap time going the way of Mr. Midmaps. Never mind. And Zinx breaking his way through. Fellow does the exact same thing. 132 to 103. Let's look at rotation to fire. Who's going to be there first? It will be Proto and Zinx for a higher. They're going to be set up inside Mayhem with them. Joining the fun. 59 seconds to go. Still so much time to fought over. The hill completely popped. And Exotic finds another kill. Exotic turning and burning on Naga and then also picking up Draza as well. Spawning mid maps so deep on old. They need to slow this down and break in together from Big Door so they can hopefully get this last 40 seconds of time because should higher get this, this is going to put an 80 lead under their belt, which is not what we expected after the break off of this map. Naga has been 18 deaths, 14 and 20. Going to need them to heat up here soon as everybody else on higher is starting to warm up. 16 and 14 on Proto, 17 and 15 on Zinx, Exotic, 30 and 14 already, 16 can maybe break 40 here going in this next hill. I mean, he has a minute and 30 seconds in real time space, man. I mean, this is absolutely incredible. Well, Proto was far out on the hill off the start, and then once they started getting pushed inside and were losing numbers, Proto rotates off the play and grabs back spawn for higher. So now they can just set up for munitions. What a smart play, thinking at least 30 seconds ahead. So if you lose numbers, you have a chance to rotate through and not really lose too much time. Luckily, you have teammates winning gunfights. Draws is going to rotate through the back and pick up the second kill. Nagafen finally getting involved in the kill feed. Fellow on the right side, hugging that close left angle. Draza will drop. It's up to Fellow, 25 and 18, finding one. On the other side, making up a second kill. Proto will fall. So what was an early setup for a higher has quickly fallen away as Fellow has found three kills now on a six spree in a row. And they have set themselves up nicely for the new hill. And they've gathered about 20 seconds uncontested and unchallenged. And no one else from higher has been able to make a dent. Well, it was a beautiful break out of Midmaps. Unfortunately, they pushed up a little too far and did not win any of their gunfights. So they ended up spawning across the map. And now this final 20 seconds is going the way of higher. Not to mention that they are now starting to get set up on P1 Hill.
Just watching the spread right now on the minimap. Not a whole lot that's been too uncharacteristic for either side, but you are looking at starting to cross that 200 point mark. Just 10 seconds really needed. And that's a big win from Proto. Again, you're thinking about a couple of hills ahead. We're going to be looking at lower annex when we pop for P2. Well, let's go to our third set of hills on our third rotation. Exotic will take five down. Draza again in the kill feed. Dead even. 15 engagements. Hell of a thing to see. Knockven trying to find the second. Will not do so. He will fall. About a 20-ish, 9-point lead at the moment for higher. Entirely doable for Mr. Midmass, but again, you need everyone to start slaying on all fronts. That comes down to Decimate and Naga Fan. They need to pull their weight for higher. They just need to re basically rely on Exotic. He's been carrying the low, 34 and 20, and at this moment, they have had no problem breaking into the hill, regaining control, getting the time, and they're already set up for lower annex. That's a really important gunfight for it draws that away, and now this 20 seconds of hardpoint time is going towards higher and just creating their lead even further and further. And not even that they have to worry about rotation because once again, Exotic has been breaking this next point on his own every single time. And I'm afraid we're going to see that happen here again as number five. That's going to be Proto on your minimap making his way towards the top. He will be taken down a couple of seconds going the way of mid-maps. Draws and not letting anybody pass P1. He finally gets taken down. Not even there to clean up the mess. But again, they have a large de deficit to overcome here they want to get back into this game it may not seem like it, but Draza at 30 and 28, every life he's at least getting you a kill, so it might come in an opportune time. Here comes the Flood. Decimate can't win the gunfight. Two will fall higher. All blue in the kill feed, and they'll get the early time as well. They can't win it here, I don't believe. They shouldn't. Well, actually, they might just with an extra tick. They might get lucky enough, but still, you have to contest for the time. The kills don't come in. Higher continue to light up the kill feed. Here comes Exotic trying to find one on the outside. Picks it up. Proto in there with the trade. 231 to 198. The time continues to go the way of higher. Uncontested in the hill. Exotic roaming on the outside picks up one more. Anyone else from Mr. Midmap's going to come in for a challenge? Finally, they get inside. They'll cross the 200 point mark. But again, now with the contest, you won't win it here. Let's see who's set up first for fire. It should be Mr. Midmap's. They will be. And the first ones inside will be dropped. Need the maps to play a little bit closer to this fire hill as one break could name this map off for higher. But they're starting to get their kills, but they don't know that higher spawn in the back. They're turning for it now, and they need to start stacking this hill. This is do or die for the They can very much work this back here should they get spawned to the next hill, but they have to play close together when all these gunfights. Death goes down. Number five, that's Proto. He takes down two. This could be it. This could mark it for higher. Higher needs five more seconds. Nobody's going to be close enough to contest this hard point. And what was looking like such an easy map for mid maps ended up turning in higher's favor. Well, it really was off the back of Exotic. How many times was he on a 4, 5, 6 spree? And that really blew the game open. You saw him having free range towards the catwalk, picking up two, three kills. And the best play of the game, make it a fourth off spawn. Decimate Fellow could not respond. Fellow bites the unfortunate end of this gunfight. And at the end of the day, all it really took was one player to step up for higher. It was exotic to do that. Again, the underlying guiding hand of this team. When he's able to pop off, then you can get Zinx comfortable with that AR. Everyone else starts to feed through that. And it just becomes an oiled machine. And that's why higher is very dangerous as a roster. And a lot of those similarities that we just spoke about, we were looking for, for Mr. Minmaps to be able to do, right? And it just came down to not having the actual kills there. You had Draza at almost dead even. Fellow didn't have a great game. Decimate was struggling. Nagafen could not get past dead even. It, it seemed like when you needed them most to step up, they did not answer the call. And that is a situation where you absolutely could have won map one. It was much closer than I think you know, Proto and Zinx would have expected. I don't think they, they expected it to be that close given the, the lack of slaying on the other side, but still a, a game one win. And for higher, that's a big game one because now you set the tone for the series. No, absolutely. I completely agree with you. Exotic really put the rest of his teammates in the bat, in his back for the first half of that game. And it just gave them all time to warm up because I believe at the end, they all ended up pretty even across the board. And I believe at right. some point, some of them were triple negative. I mean, Exotic really just, he was the reason they were able to come back. Cause I mean, it's not like on the side of min maps, they were doing that bad. Fellow, he was going off. Draza was getting three pieces everywhere, but unfortunately Decimate and Nogatin were not able to keep up. And we got a replay for you just so we can see how that all went down once again. Just watch Exotic's hand just cusp under and carry his teammates. I mean, here it goes. There's two. He gets the third. I mean, he had over a minute and 30 in the hill, not to mention the most um, engagement on his team. And we don't like to harp on negativity, obviously, but you can't go throughout this first hard point without talking about it. 
Naga Fen struggled. 4 and 12 was triple negative at one point for the majority of the game. You look at Decimate, didn't have a great second half to this hard point. Uh, Fellow, 16 and 15, right? Usually he's the front slayer for this roster. And Drazo, he was keeping it dead even. He's giving you one kill per life at least, so you're guaranteed one trade, but they just couldn't really rally that into some positive time. And when you're just struggling to get three people, let alone all four, uh, together on the same page to slay out and control the hill, it's going to be difficult, especially in a map like Crossroads that requires so much out of your subs and for your ARs to constantly be on the roam. Uh, and that's where a map like Zinx can really thrive, 25 and 27, right? Keeping yourself involved in the action. And now we look at game two. We look at the SD and in a situation where, once again, um, th this one is not over by any stretch of the imagination, but if your ARs are still struggling the way Mr. Midmaps have shown, I do kind of worry about the SD. Let's take a look at the maps once again. Moscow, uh, where you can get a little bit cheeky with just running three subs. Don't see it often, but you can have a field day towards top SKs if your subs are playing well. But I do worry, Ali, about the ARs, especially looking at a raid three hardpoint coming up after that. Uh, if the ARs are offline right now for Mr. Midmaps, how will that affect them in Moscow SD? Usually looking at this map pool, you know, Moscow is can S and D. I would be leaning toward mid maps, but once again, I didn't see much out of Dustmate as we've seen in the previous series. So I feel like Hired can really capitalize on that. I mean, coming hot off that 250 to 216 hard point exotic. We already know he's warm and ready to go. We saw Proto start coming up at the end, and I feel like this is suddenly gonna get a lot scarier for mid maps going into this S and D, unless they can just kind of chalk the hard point and focus on winning their 1v1s. And if Exotic is playing this succinct, even in the hard point, chaotic as, as it may be, Crossroads, we all know the deal. Going into Moscow, again, you don't have to worry about him, right? He's going to give you what he's going to give you. He's going to be consistent. And I look at the rest of this team for hire. And when they're shooting on all cylinders, man, they, they're dangerous, right? They can take out a team like Mr. Bitmaps. Yes, most teams have. But you look at the, the town on the other side, like this is one of those old classic matchups you might have expected to see back in the old days of the Call of Duty League. So uh, the fact that, again, and we see so many pros down here and they're all trying to find the right rosters for them. Uh, while it, it may not look pretty off the start, this is a good showing for Exotic. He, he's showing that he can still carry the team in the slaying column. And for someone like Zinx, who is known as a mobile AR, who's known to usually be at the top of the slaying leaderboard, uh, he doesn't have that much pressure on his shoulders. And now going into the SD alley, uh, what are your predictions? What are you looking for? And, and do you think it's going to be as maybe one-sided as that hard point seemed to be at times? Honestly, I'm going to say this with some good confidence. I feel like it's going to be a little bit more one-sided now. I feel like losing okay. that first crossroads to mid-maps was just might be too much of a blow. I feel like I might turn into a little bit of a blame game into comms because you know how players can get sometimes, especially when the sure. stats were looking the way that they were. I feel like Hire is really about to capitalize on that and just run with this SMB. I think if you want to set the tone for the series like you just did, especially off the back of Exotic's performance, you go into this s and and you play the exact same way. Aggressive, calm, cool, collected. Just continue to do that on a map like Moscow, where opening up the bomb site could be very, very difficult. Once numbers start to drop, welcome to this year. When numbers drop, things get crazy. Uh, that's very much the scenario for Moscow. It can be difficult to retake this map as an offense, but uh, again, a, a lot like control. I think that it's going to come down to the offense and, and for either side, whatever you want to talk about. Who's able to control the site better? Who gets the bomb? down first do we see a different amount of rush plants um i, I have to be looking at it specifically for this s and d Nagafen and Fellow together, right? Like when we watched Miami yesterday, Nagafen was running bomb a lot and Fellow was watching the mid cross. Fellow got caught out a couple of times, but even then he was able to punish back. I need to see Nagafen step it up. More importantly, I need to see game two. We're already loaded in. Let's get going. And I'm excited to see if higher are going to go up 2 0 or if Mr. Midmaps are going to tie this up at one apiece. I'm excited to see if maybe we see a bit of a slaying change here from the side of higher and see if maybe Exotic kind of steps back and see if we have any other players on the side of higher kind of step up to the plate during this Moscow s &D. You got to be looking at Mayhem, got to be looking at Proto. Interested to know what Zinc's going to be running. I'm assuming it's the XM4, but XM4 in hand for Fellow off the start. Again, Bomb Carrier, Nagafen, nothing too uncharacteristic. We all know the deal. Slow, stalemate. No one crossing that 50-yard line. Closest might be Proto on the A site. Stuns come out, so Decimate gets tagged. Now we wrap back to mid-map. And we might be looking at a B call here as one player is out of position. That is Zinx on the statue at Main Street. If they cross through Metro, he will spot him. He'll do so. Fellow drops. First blood for hire. 
It's usually such a tough bomb site to try and take over with the B site because should you wait just too long as they're watching unfold now, then Tyre starts getting whiff of that and they can start making that rotation. You know, you get caught out on street and now you've left Draws all in his lonesome with the bomb and Dest is just stuck in mid trying to get some information, but we're going to see a rotation out of the side of mid maps. Tyre trying to go the long round and maybe shoot him in the back. I mean, 25 seconds on he's put down. Dest needs to get the kill on and of course that's not gonna happen after that hot streak and draws it now we're gonna clean it up but i mean 1v2 18 seconds to get that bomb down we're gonna be looking at a miracle here this time. And just as soon as you say that, he just drops. I mean, yep. what do you really do in that situation for Draza? You pick up one kill, there's really nowhere else to run. You have 18 seconds. And that'll be round one. So good retake from Exotic and, Cro and company. Uh, you know, nothing too uncharacteristic off the start. Very slow start to this game, too. They get first blood. They rally that into a round one win. And I believe if we keep going back on offense with with Mr. Midmaps, if they're going to keep giving Nagafen the bomb, I'm interested to know how they're going to play him towards the site. Because A is more difficult. Well, B is more difficult on the route, but A can be really tricky because everyone stacks on defense and you have to hope that your utility at least gets enough of attack to go in for the trade. But I want to know how they'll play it. For now, though, we sit with higher on offense. Zinx on your screen, Proto running bomb, Proto moving up to mid map. Three players will rotate back from Mr. Midmaps. Essentially a 1v1 at the top of the minimap. As Zinx and Fellow might run into each other's lines of sights. Mayhem rotating through the back. I and love Draza this feels play. like they might be moving. I love this play off higher. They took the bomb through mid to A and they baited the entire team of Midmaps over to B side. And now they have full control after Zinx gets that first pick on the fellow. I was worried that we were going to see another slow bomb push and get picked out, but I should have known better with the leadership of Exotic and Proto running through. They didn't even lay the bomb down. They didn't need to. Absolutely outslaying mid-maps right now. Beautiful plays out of them. Draw the stuck in a 1v4. Elevator's not the best place to be when the rest of the team knows you're there. Gonna try and maybe get a pick on Bricks, but I mean, this is just hunting to prey at this point. To make some slides, get some trades going through. None goes down higher. Now standing 2-0 and in the S&D. Terrazzo once again in an unfair situation. Not much you're gonna really be able to do when you're out of position on the site. And you got three players closing in on your location. 1v3 again. Higher doing a good job of grabbing first blood and continuing to put pressure onto the site, force Mr. Bidmaps to adapt on the fly, which is not easy to do for any team. 4-0 for Mayhem. Nagafen. No, oh, Fellow going to grab the bomb. Okay, we're changing it up. I like it. Looks like we might go in for an A hit. Four men spread on the map for hire. All pushed up. One near bank, one at mid. Draza going to roam through top eskies. No one spotted. Here come the utility. Okay, Mayhem. You're dirty for that. Almost picks up first blood. Decimate entirely too weak for a challenge. We think about it anyway. Nakavin shuts down the attack from the back, and the flank will get cut. Zinx, top eskies going for a challenge again. Has to dip out of dodge. Numbers start to fall. Exotic picks up two kills in the process. Zinx picks up the third. It all falls apart. And Mr. Midmaps, after getting first blood, Fellow shuts down the flank, and Exotic finds a two piece that completely changes the round. I mean, I know I talked about possibly, you know, Exotic being able to take a break in the s and and the teammates kind of oh. step it up for him, but oh, the snap <laughs> onto Draza. I mean, Exotic is just absolutely on fire, but also look at Mayhem. He is 5-0. and oh. Zinc sitting at 3-1. and one. Proto can just kind of put his feet up at this point and carry that bomb sitting at 0-1 mm -hmm. because, I mean, his teammates are doing all the slaying for him. Well, if you get first blood, you're going to win... Each round, and then the next round, and then the next round, and then the next round. It's just, it's too much at this moment. All four pushing up towards Metro. Higher thinking about it. Saying, hey, maybe that's not the play. Let's see if we can get some information and then rotate back to A. Looks like that will be the call. This exotic will run point towards the site. <laughs> we'll move to mid for Mr. Mid Maps. You can just see the confusion on mid-maps right now. They're like, hmm, are they coming to B or <laughs> A? What is the they call? They <laughs> fell for a once, and they're about to fall for it again. They're going mid to maybe hopefully cut them out, but Bombsite is still in spawn. Unfortunately, Hire did not catch them. Oh. That was they catch them with their pants down in glass room. That is first blood on the side of Hire. What confusing round of S&D right now as we saw all of mid-maps go for that rotation for a second time. The bomb does still need to go down. 30 seconds left on the clock. It's not down and out for mid map just yet, but draws a falls mid. Now we're going to see the bomb go down at A, leaving Nagafen on his lonesome. 
Can you get there? Not gonna happen. Just thinking to myself casually as this round plays out. How many times have Mr. Minmaps, one player regardless, been stuck in a 1v3, 1v4 situation? Seems like it's been almost every round at this point. Then Exotic picks up the kill, and you're just looking at a situation where... Uh, you called it out perfectly, Ali. Got caught with their pants down, and they've been falling for the trap every single time. The one time that Mr. Midmaps just said, screw it, we're going to rotate through mid and go for the flank. Uh, or, or, excuse me, Hire said that. Fellow picked it up, but then they lost that round as well. So it just has not been panning out. You're down 0-4. You desperately need a round, like expeditiously. Down bad, are we? And one near mid. Dross could find first blood if he peeks the right way. Proto might get it though, he will do so. One more round, here comes the challenge. Nowhere to run, have to find a kill. Draza will trade it out three on three. That was such a late trade, and now all of higher knows that mid maps are stuck in mid. They're gonna try and push their way out of Eski's exotic though. It has his back turned to it. He's gonna get sandwiched uh -oh. between man and exotic. Exotic finds one. He's gonna find the second. I mean, where are the trades coming down? He almost finds the third. What Jeez. a quick collapse on the mid maps. I mean, they are just looking confused on the map right now, Space Man. It's like herding gerbils into a lawnmower. I don't know what that means, but like, <laughs> look at this. Where are they gonna go? They're just cutting them down. You have them moving all together through top eskies, no spacing. And at the end of the day, you could just corner them into a spot they can't retreat from. Mayhem has yet to die. Mayhem is still 6-0. and oh. Somebody stop this man. Death's the counterpart on the side of mid maps, unfortunately, 0-5. Oh Haven't seen him warm up too much today, unfortunately. They seem to be suffering consequences as they are down 0-5. Oh Draza, able to catch two of higher going through Eski, but Zinx answers right back on two of his own. Come on, you were up 1v1 situation. Zinx versus Draza, oh, excuse me, Zinx versus Naga. Naga 1 and 5 versus Zinx 8 and 1. Spaceman, I don't know where your money is going, but... I think... Oh, they got first... Mr. Minbass <laughs> got first blood. I smiled. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> they actually did it. However, using the streak to ping... So he has to know that they're far back at A. Zinx, bomb down. This is entirely doable as well for Nagafen. What a time to clutch up and get your second kill on this S&D. Nagafen playing it really, really well. But again, you're giving up a lot of map control, knowing the bomb is down. Will he get cut off? Zinx, rotating behind, Naga. might get perfect COD timing. This is the turnaround that you needed, Naga. No! Mm. He was facing the right way. He was pre-aiming it. And still was unable to get the shots off. 6 0. Higher. Absolutely running through min maps on this SD. Well, if, if there was ever a map that just was not close, uh, that might be it. Uh, even in even in the round before that, where you had three members of mid maps moving up top eskies together, which again is still risky because you're just bunching yourselves into a trap. Uh, Exotic picks you off from the back, two kills in a row. Like, everyone collapsed from higher. Mr. Midmaps have nowhere to go. And the thing that's surprising for me, like, it was a very clinical, clean S&D. What's surprising to me is, and again, this just might be a, hey, four individually talented players on a roster that just doesn't work at the moment. You have Draza, Nagafen, and Fellow. Okay, Fellow and Nagafen together have so much experience just as a duo. But you have Draza, Nagafen, and Fellow. Right, and and this team with Decimate is is struggling in in the one game mode that you'd think they'd be really really good at, and I just I, I just don't understand. Let's take a look at the the replays from that SND. It's essentially all higher higher, right? I mean, it's a higher I, I would be surprised if there was one if there was one actual replay that showed mid maps because they didn't get that many kills. I mean, they just they were not able to figure out any rhythm. They kept getting left in one v one v three one v four situations, Ali. And am, am I am I being harsh? But for a team that's this stacked with S and D stars, they just don't look like they're playing S and D that well. I mean, it was mind blowing because they kept falling for the same trick three times. Three times I watched mid map rotation onto that fake B push, and I mean it was just unfortunate to watch. It was unfortunate to watch on the mini map. Was like, oh god, don't fall for it again. You know what happened last time? Just send somebody mid, send somebody street, send them to get that mm. information and get the heck out of there. But unfortunately, we saw none of that out of mid map. 
Well, uh, again, a lot for mid-maps, this was a morale series, right? If, if you're able to come in and show that you can play at least as a group of four together coherently, that's going to do a lot for this team. But at this moment, uh, in Hardpoint, they look, they, look, they look like they can compete on talent alone. In S&D, they look, at least for this series, they look absolutely lost. There is no other way to sugarcoat that. Now we go to Raid Control. You must win. There's no other question. You have to win this or you're going to get 3-0 swept. For higher, you have so much momentum on your side. You have just baited and perfectly tricked and played uh, Mr. Midmaps to a T so far. The, the hard point is a little bit closer, but Exotic is having a field day in the respawns. You go into raid control. You know, I'm just going to ask you, what, what do what do higher, uh, how do higher approach this control? Um, are, are you looking at a, a, a different kind of composition, whether you're running like, you know, two X and fours, two AK 74 U's? Are you looking at three subs, one AR? Uh, what are you thinking for higher as they look to close out the series 3 up? For higher, for sure, they're definitely going to need a flex player to pull out an AR on this map because it is so much wider and more open than what we're used to when it comes to a map like Crossroads or Garrison. And I'm, I'm expecting higher to run with this. I'm expecting them to just run at mid-maps. I'm expecting a 3-0. I'm expecting a shutdown. I'm just, I'm trying to be on the side of mid-maps and I'm trying to call them. You know, they have their moments where they look like they're doing really well, but I haven't sure. seen any of that in this series, unfortunately, yet today. So I think this is going to be an easy series for higher. Mm, well, let's get into game three. It is control on raid. And here's the thing. Raid's a little bit different than everything else. We've seen it for a decade, but it also can be unforgiving if you know how to play it. And that's going to be the question for hire. How well do they play through and how well do they play on offense off the opening point? Well, for Mr. Mid Maps, you need flawless defense and you need flawless call of duty throughout the rest of the series. You have to reestablish some rhythm, regain your bearings and win the war of attrition at mid map off the start. It's two kills in a row. Make that a third for mayhem. And for hire, they're already on to beat. Already a beautiful push out of higher onto the B site. I mean, that's a tick gone, about to be a tick and a half, possibly two. And fellow getting behind enemy lines here, trying to maybe shoot a couple in the back. And it looks like Nago is going to try and get a couple spawn kills, but you got to kill, you got to kill higher first to hopefully get any spawn kills. So it looks like we're well, going to lose B here as they have completely given up on the B side and going completely spawn kills, but Naga does get taken out. And so, I mean, they invested so much and came out with so little. Well, the good thing for higher is that you have two minutes to work with. You get B so quickly. Now, again, it's just about retaking mid-map, getting out of spawn and moving to A. From Mr. Mid-Maps on the other side, Decimate needs to find his first kill. Fellow needs to start heating up. Nagafen 3-2, and two, having a good start to this control. 23-22, to 22. life differential not too detrimental for any side. But at this moment, we slow things down in the kitchen. Decimate on your screen. Can he find his first kill? Doesn't look like he's going to be able to do so. He'll get cut down. Nate was there for the free check. And Draza survives this gunfight somehow. Now, nades fly out. Draws is still alive. Proto on your screen and completely tagged up. Guardian Angel is Zinx. And here comes the collapse onto A. Nagafen is the last alive inside the point. He's going to get shut down. Exotic reads that perfectly. And they're going to work on this first progress. Absolutely incredible out of hire. I mean, they just set up camp in the map spawn just to force them to kind of relocate themselves and try to sniff them out. And a good wipe from Mr. Midmaps is something we never saw coming. 16 to 18 lives. Higher now freshly off spawn, but again, they have a minute and 20 seconds to work with. They're so trying to get a couple spawn kills. Hopefully he does get tagged up, unfortunately. So number five on your main map, it's gonna be fellow trying to long route. I don't exactly know what he's doing quite yet. I guess he's trying to see if anybody tries to go a long route to get behind them and shoot them in the back, but he doesn't seem to find anybody. But kill suddenly starting to go the way of mid maps exotic now doing what exotic does in the point. No cap yet on any of the A ticks, they still have a minute to work with. Zinx catching follow in mid and he'll start to get the progression going as he's waiting for the cavalry. He gets Draza too. All of a sudden, all the kills going the way of higher six and three. Zinx turning it up for this control. It was a life lead for higher now no longer. It's funny how raid works, isn't it? Second progression comes through. They're going to cap it. Draza last, last alive. He'll get shut down, but they will still get the progression. Halfway through about number three at this moment. 50% there. Make that about 60. Continuing his proto. Decimate shuts down one. Exotic will take out fellow. Zinks from behind. Doesn't even matter. Higher get onto the point. They waste no time. Spare no expense. 1-0 lead in game three. Definitely. I saw a little hope there when I got that full wipe from mid-maps, but again, higher answered right back. We're going to watch Zinx go cross it down with a heady, beautiful shots out of him. Looks like he gets another here. He's going to hop up. Look at Pillar's fellow beamed out of mid. I mean, 
Tigers just are looking like the better team. Yeah. If I was a coach right now, I that's how I would break it down to my players. Like, hey, Hires is the better team at this moment. But <laughs> let, let's 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 make no mistake about it. Fellow six and five, Draza eight and six, Nagafen turned up, Decimate found some kills. Uh, fellow at one point was like seven and two, like or, excuse me, six and like three, six and two, something like that. Like they're starting to heat up, and that's the important thing to remember is that all it takes is one sp one flurry of kills, one spur of the moment action for both these teams, and they could walk away with a win in this map. Everyone on the point for the moment, A being locked down. Progression will come in for the second tick. Proto tries to come in for the front challenge, and he finds one. Two kills now in favor of higher. Make that three. Two off the back of Proto, and they will denutralize that third progression. And for this moment, they will hold on to A. It was a pretty fantastic textbook push out of min maps just to go for those two A progressions. And then once they were wiped, you know, start going towards the G site. But again, like I said, because it was a textbook, higher was ready for it. So no progression at B site for right now. A is just sitting uncontested currently. If a single player from min map just kind of made their way through mid, isn't it? possibly cap that while this B fight is going down and trades are going through on the side of Mr. Midmap so as they start to get some progression at B they almost have two ticks on it now higher just falling behind live count in favor of Mr. Midmap's not been all in his lonesome against Proto he does win the fight and this is why I said needed to happen one of the players from Midmap make them their way towards the A site to kind of finish that cap and give their team wiggle room at the B site found in a 1-2 he tries to at least catch one but he's unable to that progression will probably Gets slowed down by Proto as he's on the chase for what looks like Fellow. Slippery man, him <laughs> pulling out the pistol. Slowing it down, certainly, are we? Mr. Midmaps again trying to move their way to both sites. Mayhem inside Tiki will take down one towards top bedroom. Everyone else falls appropriately. Two trades for both sides. Exotic finds one and escapes with his life. Gonna get hunted. Decimate won't let him survive for long. And they should be able to get B. No one else is around. Okay, so we put another minute on the clock. And we have a full tick to go through onto A. Let's move through money with Decimate, shall we? We will. Zinc's on the other side of the wall. Your mobile AR needs to start racking up a couple of kills. Only 10 and 10 dead even. The same with Mayhem. Stuns come out. Exotic can't survive for long. He will get dropped. Decimate picks up the kill. 12 and 10 on a three spree. Thinking about going towards top laundry and decides to go right to A. I like the aggression. Let's move right onto the point. And at this moment, he's going to stay alive and get some progression. I love the decision making out of min maps to just go through their spawn and then come through A, but out the back, I mean, they can 100% the kids tick right now, which is exactly what they're going to do because nobody is close enough to contest on the side of higher. Now, this is what we wanted out of min maps. We wanted them to kind of turn a couple gears, but, and you know, when it comes to control, sometimes it's just, you know, whoever can take the defensive. So we're going to see if this will keep going back and forth in the later rounds. Well, the nice thing about coming off an SND, regardless of what your, your series count is, is that you can go into a control where it very much is like hardpoint meets SD. You can relax and just say, hey, let's get our rhythm back under us. Let's start to establish some, some cadence as a unit. Let's get some kills. Let's see if we can turn this baby around. And at this moment, this is the best we've seen Mr. Mimas play in a map and a half. And they're looking good, but it comes down to higher on offense now. How are they going to approach it? You have Exotic at dead even, Proto at 11 and 15, and Proto's going to go for the first tick onto A. Takes down one. Draza with a couple of shots will clean up Proto. And you're looking at a couple of challenges, but still the numbers are there for higher, and they'll get the first tick. Higher really no said, you want to do a full A push? That's fine. We'll go ahead and do it better. Four players from higher now on the A point. Locking this down is almost at the second tick. Naga coming from behind. We might catch a couple players in the back. They're going to turn down in time. Naga turning up for the first time, but I feel like we're serious. Nice two-piece out of him as he contests the hill. Will he find the first? He will. Will he find a fourth? Who knows? But Naga now sitting 13 and 14, able to stop that third tick progression at A. And it comes out with the help of Fellow on a double kill as well. On a two spree, Naga on three. You slow the progression on A. Decimate gets cut down, doesn't check the right corner. Nagafin now on the point, and he will keep this at a two cap for the A side. We go and look at B at the top side of your bidding map. Let's go over to pools and basketball court. It will be Decimate who's there. And I believe Draza now works his way in. He does. Proto gets tagged up in money, has to slip and dodge his way out of bullets and try to find some cover. At this moment, he says, screw that. We're going right inside. <laughs> Dips out. And now he just needs reinforcements to come from kitchen. Woo! Proto is so slippery. He just went right past those two and Tiki and now working on that B progression. Fantastic teamwork out of Proto and Exotic. And they're locking this down. And A still at two takes and we're still not been able to send somebody that way just yet. May have ended up winning the gunfight against Naga finally in their spawn, but 
start in Zinx, I gotta worry about both sides. Never mind, they got it. Easy turn and burn by Zinx. Now progression at B. We're probably gonna see a second stick coming out of here now. Mid maps looking to give up that B side now. Just locked down at A. We're seeing a little bit of a repeat, but from the side slipped from our previous round. You kill one more wave, you're gonna get B locked down. They should be able to do it. They will. Proto, we thank you for that. Takes down Fellow. And B is secure. Put another minute on the clock. Now we just need to go to A. And the problem for Mr. Midmaps is you only have one tick you afford, you're, can afford to give at this moment. It's up to Mayhem on a three spree. Jumping back down to the cut. He's not going to be able to find the kill. That's a big win by Draza, but Proto finds two more. And he's still alive on the point. He's just going to secure it himself. And the heads up play to pick up the kills, jump on the point, and finish the round. A 2-1 lead, all set up by Proto on that final engagement. Beautiful two out of Proto there to get those. We're going to watch that. Nagafin shot in the back again. Fantastic plays out of him as he ended up to end with that A progression, although they do end up falling and moving around. It's a glimmer of hope space. That's Minmaps just keeps giving me glimmer of hope. This little <laughs> light shines of stardust. But now down two and one in the control, two and O oh in the series. Do they do they come back here? Do they turn it around? I think they can, but it, anyway, at this moment, like, yeah, they have to. So if I'm going to say yes, I'm going to say, yeah, they're going to do it here because they absolutely have to. But, uh, Ali, the big question again is how are they going to control mid-map, right? That's the big key. You don't really have to worry about spawns too much because you can still orchestrate a hit as a team. But at this moment, Exotic going to work through mid. Gets tagged, but still alive. Prado picks up one. No progression on the B on the start. Draws with the challenge. I love that ego, Chow. Still gets the win. Trophies down. No utility will be in play here. He might get the first tick. If Mayhem decides not to challenge, it doesn't matter. You have reinforcements here for Mr. Minmaps. They should be able to come in, and here come the streaks. We'll see if it connects with anyone. Proto looking to catch Drowsy, catch Drowsy, and he's going to catch Dez. That's going to hurt so bad. Progression at B now has been stopped. Hopefully we see a player from Hyrex able to D cap that B site before it hits that first tick. Already, this is looking a bit scary for mid maps. 40 seconds left, they don't even have a tick on either site, but progression is still there. Nobody from higher has slid in to try and degress that. And things gets ripped off the heady by Draza. One man army, 24 and 20, just doing the absolute most for his team right now. What is Proto doing? He has been sitting on this side of the map the entire round. He is just waiting for them in their spawn. He knows they can. He knows say he knows that they can only spawn up towards that back garage. They're just gonna flood to water. So he's just trying to keep up racking streaks. I like the idea. They're not gonna get to A. You have 35 seconds to go. They will cap B. So a failed defensive hold. You give more credit to Mr. Maps than a defensive loss. They do well on offense. 18 to 17. They have the life count as well. Proto just doesn't want to move. I know we're on mayhem. He finds one kill. Proto has just been here for the entire round. And he might this be able to pick up one kill if he doesn't. Trust the process does. I have ever seen. And he gets okay, taken he down, down, so he only gets one kill I know kill when those comms, he's like, don't even worry about it, bro. Just, I got it. Like, no. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> he wasted the streak. See, he sat in mid-map just to only get one kill and get taken down. Lives down on the side of higher. Just looks a little bit like a couple of pickups going into this round. Well, all that for a loss of mid-map control and two ticks onto A. It will come through shortly. Studs come out. Now you have to flood through Courtyard. Try to get a couple of kills. Zig draws against a three-piece. So, okay. I'm not saying that, again, the, the, the Proto was the linchpin for this round's unsuccessful attempt. But it certainly, I guess, didn't pan out the way that he was expecting. And they immediately retake A without any problem. I can only imagine. This. Oh, we're gonna watch that three piece from Draza. That was a miss. Beautiful oh, shots nice. out of him. They lined up right for him there on stairs. But yeah, I don't. Oh, we're not gonna pin the blame on Proto just yet. But I am wondering because now you have burned your streaks. You burned yeah. time on the map. You are now tied up two two. And the last thing you want to do is give mid maps any sort of headway, any sort of motivation, any sort of uh, adrenaline going through us. It would have been nice to have those streaks when they started flooding into A and you try to take them off. But at this moment, you got nothing. Exotic will find two kills. 29-27, still so much time. They're going to get the first take in onto A. The only player in the vicinity is Fellow. He's going to wait for reinforcements, but from behind it is Zinx. He'll get the kill. Two more will fall. Mr. Midmap's getting peeled off the map at this moment. And the second tick, now good on A. So it looks like for the moment, Hyra wasting no time off of that bad hold on defense. And they're getting everything locked down on this A site.
And that's exactly what they needed. A is basically gone, signed off, and done. And mid maps are so pushed up and spread out on the map. So Pyre really needs to work on winning these 1v1s because even if they kill the mid map, they still have to work their way all the way through the site, which is mm. a the map. Draza really trying to have something to say, but Exotic ends up shutting him down. I mean, we talk about Exotic being an absolute superstar this entire series, and he needs to prove again, again and again how good of a player that he is. If you're higher, I guess the, the entire strat right now is shut down Draza and you probably win. Because Draza is 34 and 26, constantly finding 2-3 kills. Nagafen will take down Exotic, 19 to 20. <laughs> and now what's the call? Three players are back at, at Mansion for higher. They're not able to move up or advance, but Proto has rotated around again. Proto just seems to be out of the play constantly. <laughs> I don't know what he's up to, but I like the idea. He gets shut down. And I guess that's just kind of how things work. Everyone else falls. Higher or losing lives quickly. Uh, okay. Proto has to be absolutely losing his mind right now. He's probably in comms, you know, I'm behind them guys. You know, I'm just going to wait for you guys to push the front. You know, nobody's back here. And then he just ends up getting taken down. So all for naught. But seeing our man exotic on the map, he's not going to try and pull up Proto as he pushes back. Oh God. Yes. Finding Proto in a corner. Really important gunfight happening in the back of the map here. Exotic means they need to take down Fellow if they have any hope. And Fellow is just the turret on the tree. Take down both of them. This is a totally different team. Fellow is 28 and 21, catching up to his fellow teammate Draza at 35 and 28. Mid maps have 16 lives to play with. Pyre only seven. I mean, they're looking fantastic. Yeah. We're going to a hard point again. Uh, Draza is about to hit a 40 bomb in control. This one's basically done at 16 to 4. I mean, you literally have to win four team wipes and you might have a chance. That's not going to do it. Draza, 36 and 28. Decimate on your screen. Going to close down a second. One more. Zinx, 1v15. Greatest comeback of all time. Is it possible? Maybe. No, no, it's not. <laughs> and it shuts down. So raid control goes the way of Mr. Midmaps and which was an interesting decision by Proto. I'm not going to question it too much because I don't think it had that big of an outcome. Certainly, you look at streaks and say, okay, you could have used them onto A when you needed to play defense, but at this moment, you take that away, you still have Draza dropping 40 kills and Fellow, you know, baiting out and throwing shoulders on the tree line and finding kills as well. So the, Proto's actions or inaction really didn't affect this game. It was really much Draza. It was pretty much Draza who just shut down everyone. Absolutely, and I mean, I look at those last two rounds, and I almost not take them that seriously, but I mean, actually looking at it, I mean, mid maps being down as much as they were, I mean, the comeback has been very serious for this team. We definitely saw Decimate start to wake up a bit there, Draza doing Draza things on the map, getting twos and three pieces for his teams. You can only imagine his comms is like, come on guys, like, I'm doing my best here, I need some help, and I feel like that really woke up Fellow and Decimate for sure, and Naga, I'm pretty sure it ended pretty even across the board, so we could see a bit of a different hard point coming out. I'm still favoring Pyre just a bit, but again, I mean, fantastic stuff going on in mid maps. Well, let's take a look at the replays, and you know, you talk about that hard point, and I do wonder, are we seeing the resurgence of Naga Fen in this series? Are we seeing Fellow starting to snap? Draza just continues to be a monster, there's no question about that. Uh, Decimate was contributing, right, 13-11, 14-11, he was consistently finding kills inside of the point, and you could see here, right, Naga Fen running the creek, able to pick up three kills on this rotation, he comes in, cleans up shop, decaps that last tick, and uh, everyone else just kind of fed into that aggression. You had Draza, who was just carrying the load at mid-map and after that i mean you're relying on exotic to do all that he can mayhem wasn't really helping zinx wasn't really helping proto slowed down massively and made some weird calls but hey it is what it is at this moment uh the game three just really sat on the shoulders of draza and fellow after nagafen popped off just enough to kind of propel their uh, their chances going into the later rounds and draza took it and just ran with it dropped 38 kills easily the star of that map and Fellow was able to stay alive long enough in gunfights to allow reinforcements to funnel in. And uh, yeah, Mr. Midmaps look like they're just getting warmed up and now going into the hardpoint alley. Uh, I wonder, are we going to see a different hardpoint? Because we're going to checkmate, and this is going to be a map that basically decides the series. If if Mr. Midmaps can win this, there's no reason they can't win the whole thing. No, completely, I agree. And I really feel like it was a huge turnaround after Naga got that three piece in that A point. I mean, that was just like mm. a snap into reality, I feel like for the rest of the mid-maps team, because that's when we really started to see them turn up the heat. So 
again, this hard point is absolutely deciding. I completely agree with you. I'm still favoring higher. I feel like exotics still kind of kind of underhand them a little bit, but we're gonna look out the map layout once again. Should we go the distance, we will be going into a garrison search and destroy, and that's where I really look at draws and dustmate on the side of mid maps to possibly dominate should they win this hard point. Well, look, you don't have to worry about Draza when it comes to close quarter engagements. Last night after Mr. Midmap's win, I DM'd Fellow and I said, oh, that's how you guys are playing, huh? Nice job. And I was like, hey, yeah, they never watched the cross. You guys are beaming. And he said, don't worry, I got you tomorrow. Well, so far, <laughs> he got me in the control. Now will he have me in the checkmate hard point? That's going to be the question. If Fellow has a pop-off game, I guarantee you we're going to game five. We're going to Garrison. Let's get into the hard point. Checkmate, you are our game four map. I am excited. I want to see what Fellow can do. I don't have to worry about draws. That kid is an absolute monster. I know he's going to have a big game. But on the other side, Exotic Mayhem, right? Exotic's just going to he's gonna be around and continue to stay in the action. Zinx needs to be that mobile AR. You need Mayhem and Proto to step up as well. They can still win this series. They're up 2-1 if you're just joining us. But it's going to be a lot to ask. We follow with the mobbing tag ups and okay. Des unfortunately taking himself out with his own nade. A little bit of a prenup there, but we're on board with draws. He's on a captive couple players in the back. Gonna try and use a playing window. The series points to either side so far as mid map starts to take control inside of playing, you know, a very scrappy hill back and forth. Draza taking him down. That is two down on the side of higher. No rotations going through just yet. Nagafin, though, trying to make some noise in the back of higher spawn, but it looks like Vix is ready for it as he has been called out and he will get taken down. But some good time going on the side of Mr. Midmaps. That's two big kills. Zinx needs to stay alive. He needs spawns for P2, and he knows it. Decimate coming in for the challenge. Zinx will get three. Excuse me, that's a two streak for him. He'll find both. Closing him from both sides, not much he could really do. But 27 and 9, again, the first hard point on this map. Not really going to find a lot of time. Just looking for scraps if you can. Contest where you might. And at this moment, it's up to Exotic in the back. Zinx working there as well. Nagafen gets shut down. There's a double kill. And finally, Hire might be able to lock down some spawns, but nope, Fellow is there ready and waiting. I mean, even though Fellow was able to take down Exotic, I mean, that allowed Hire to push through the front and put them right in the back. I mean, you saw mid map spawn up. And all three of them turned to kill for exotic. After turning the group, Zinx finds two. What was looking like those mid maps once again? Zinx said, No, thank you, not today. Not draws on fellow. Do get taken down the front. And 30 to 18, higher is still in this game. They're gonna get this full 20. Unless Des has something to say about it. Nate goes out, but he will get taken down by his teammates. And Midmap still seeming to fight for the strap right now. It's about 10 seconds left in this hard point. I'm very confused as to why they're investing so much and not that's allowing number five to be dropped to get into play to get that early control. Well, the fact that Hire got that much time off of that hill, there was no trophy down the entire time. So, nades were flying left and right. You have Zinx at 8 and 5, 5 seconds in the hill. Uh, 17 for Fredo. He kind of sat pretty and was uncontested. Exotic trying to work through top plane. Hill at the very bottom. We're about to have a tie game. We will have it now as Exotic finds that second kill on this life. Exotic rotating through the back of Wood. Let's see if he's able to cut down anyone who stands in his way. He might get knocked up in the back. He will. Look close and dangerous for a moment. Picks up the XM4. And now they're going to rotate in. Exotic basically does an entire parabola around the map and runs into the hill uncontested. No one else there to challenge. Mr. Midnap's very hesitant to come in for the contest. Shots ring out. And at this moment, no one's really been able to grab a solid lead going into our third hill. Higher if they're able to get this last seconds. But we still got a little pretty going to the next hill. And again, like I said, mid maps, this was the last thing they wanted to let happen was let higher and let exotic and let things to start to get on these streaky moments and that's exactly what they're doing. And they're already on rotation as well. I mean mid maps keep investing so much this last couple of seconds of hard point. I'm so confused why they aren't just taking the advantage to rotate early, but draws on Naga Fan able to push Sonic and Zinx say no, I'll take that, thank you very much, and then that time just see no rotation out of them, I feel like I'm seeing some mistakenly calls of hitting 10 seconds on the last hill, and they need to get it together before I start trying for this. If I have to play devil's advocate, to mid-map's credit, they are breaking the first setup of higher each time, but they're not really gathering any extra additional hard point time off of that. And for higher, kind of a similar situation. You're just about to cross the 100-point mark. Finally, you will do it. Not going to on your screen. Can't find the second. 
Mayhem at 7-7 seven and seven sitting inside the hill, 50 seconds to his name. We rotate through Atrasa towards the top of the plane. Three more were hit right behind. Interesting run through as they look like they're just trying to get mid-map control, but also you're giving up a lot of extra 10 seconds in the hill. Atrasa picks up two, just a disgusting reaction. But again, like you said, Ali, like they're, they're not worried about rotation, but also they're giving up 15 or, or 10 or so seconds on the ends of each hill, which kind of adds up if you think about it. I mean, right off the bat, that hill just popped and what seemingly was complete map control for mid-maps. Nobody was in the hill collecting the time, and now they're just getting picked out and spawning deep, and they're in the hill for now, but I'm very worried for mid-maps playing the rest of these hard points of rotations if they keep playing the way they have been. Naga, though, picking one off of plane. They have a good set of They can 100% be right back into the game, but Naga gets taken down. And once again, mid-maps are just starting to get picked apart one by one by higher. Raza is entirely too weak for a fight, but still giving it all. Trying to find one on the outside of the boxes, getting tagged up from the right. The slide comes through. Mayhem will find two. Mayhem will find three. Eleven and nine. Exotic now sitting in the hill. Nagafin on your screen has to rotate through spawn. Try to find one towards top plane. It zinks and will shut him down. Draza in the back. What can he do? The time continues to tick up for higher. You need to start getting some solid hill time. It feels like we've seen them break. We've seen them come in the end. We've seen them hold for maybe 10 or so seconds, but we haven't seen them grab a full 40, 50, 60 seconds off of a hill. They desperately need that to stay in this game. Draza, you had to wait teammates there as he slid in all in his lungs and took him down, oh but here comes the Cavalry Fellow with a nice two help from Des. Finally, some time going in the way of mid-maps, but again, last time we saw this happen, it didn't last for too long. Two things trying to force their way in. No trophies down. Cavalry is out. Desmi gets taken down by a nade, but after trades to a fella, left on his lonesome in the hill. Not picking up the time, though, as he gets out and gets taken down. Now 19 seconds going away up higher. Getting a little bit of rotation out of mid-maps, finally. Draza, sitting in wait. Kills if you're higher. This game's going a little bit too close for their liking. They'll be able to rotate back towards P2. We'll head to NASA. Back there, ready and waiting is Zinx. And you have Proto as well. They need to clear out Decimate, though. I think Decimate knows one must be around. He picks up the kills, so that'll help their mid map spree as they gain back some ground. Mayhem underneath the plane. Rotating around might get perfect timing. He'll do it. Wins the gunfight as well. He gets cut down, but at least the information is known. Draza won't last long. Proto takes out Exotic. I guess so. Higher <laughs> still in the hill. 167 and counting. About to be 100 points up. If Mr. Midmaps don't do anything to respond, Decimate at 14 and 20. Nagafen at 11 and 19. Draza at 13 and 18. Fellow just almost even. This is not looking good. You desperately need a stronghold and a clear, but you can't even get through the backline AR. Proto with the AK-74U takes down Decimate. Mayhem is still there ready and waiting. Nagafen drops. Zinc is uncontested. Not really a need for the trophy because no utility has come out. And they're about to cross 200 to 86. Uh, at this point, you can win the game off scrap time. This is bad for Mr. Midnight. I mean, Zinx and Proto were starting to take out their own teammates at this point. It was getting so boring sitting in the middle, and we finally see a rotation <laughs> out of mid-maps. But across the board, I mean, Draza, the, the god himself, is 15 and 19, fellow 18 and 19, Nagafin 11 and 20, Des 16 and 22. I mean, nobody's able to the team. Zinx is having his way under the plane. Where where did mid-maps go? They had such a strong start, and then it's like the gear suddenly just got stuck with a nail in the middle of them. Higher is looking fantastic on this hard point. Well, I don't know if it's just... I mean, it, for the past minute, it's been just higher killing everything, but for the entire game, it's just seemed like Mr. Mid-Maps never had a strong grasp of how they wanted to hold an actual hill, and they were just playing kills. And that's okay, but it only works if we're actually able to outslay everyone else on the map. At this moment, they finally cross, cross 100 points. Streaks might come in. You're paying for information. You'll get said information. 209 to 105. Closing it in on a 100-point difference. We pop for P3. Excuse me, P4. The exotic will find one kill. Here comes some more streaks. Zinx picks up one. Zinx picks up two. Can't find the third. About to be 220 to 109. Alley, they can win here. I just feel like on the side of min maps, I'm just watching individual players run around the map. I no longer see the teamwork that I saw in the previous control, and Hyrex is just running with it. I mean, you don't even have to see oh much already. You're still keep lighting up blue exotic, oh just snaps and burns on deaths. I mean, 
20 seconds left for Hyra to take this. I mean, the morale on mid-maps isn't even... I can only imagine. Well, they're just... They're losing every gunfight. They're getting smoked right now. They're getting absolutely torn off the map. And it's hard to come back in a hard point when you only got eight seconds to give up. Exotic wins one gunfight. Only six more seconds needed. Can't win the third. Numbers start to funnel in, but that might be all she wrote, folks. This has been an absolute slaughter. They will stay alive for the moment they took the Game 3 control, but as a new hill pops, no one is around, and higher are going to win this series off a dominant checkmate hardpoint. Absolutely heartbreaking space, man. It started to go downhill the second that I saw that they were hitting 10 seconds on late rotation over and over and over again. It wasn't even like a one mistake of like, oh, oops, we committed a little too much to this right. last 10, to this last 20. It was hill after hill. They were committing to like 20 seconds of scrap that they easily could have given up to get 20 to the next location. So it's definitely a heartbreaking match to watch. Heartbreaking is right. You two both sound demoralized. I think Mr. Bin Maps at this point <laughs> is feeling it more than anyone else. I mean, that's a that's a squad of great guys. We've seen them put up some of the most exciting matches of Call of Duty in our scene in many for many years. And we got half of Team Revenge on there, half of Team Elevate. Uh, you know, Naga Finn and Fellow, certainly big names in the community, but they just couldn't pull through. Ali, I think you said something really important that might touch on what we saw throughout this whole series. And it just seemed like it was a team of individual players. They didn't seem to be on the same page. They just weren't finding the kills. And we saw it especially unfold there in that hard point. So, Spaceman, I'd like to see, I'd like to hear some of your thoughts on, uh, on maybe what was working so well for hire like what put them over mid maps in this series of uh, course we are, we're familiar with the mistakes of mid maps so far yeah. but what do you think made hire so strong um well while we take a look at the map layout of this entire series uh, this was essentially um you know it was a bit of a slay fest right uh you look at the first hard point 250 to 216 higher take that one i thought that might even be a map that's a little bit closer because we saw mr min maps take it yesterday uh the snd was a blowout like that was the most one-sided snd we've seen in these past two days the control <laughs> a little bit different a little bit weird at times but the slaying starts to pick up not defense finding kills draza drops 40 and then we go to the hard point and it just looked like they gave their all on the control and they just had nothing left in the tank. I mean, uh, higher exotic was playing great. Proto and mayhem were contributing in the kill feed, right? Like uh, Zinx and, and, and mayhem and P2 and NASA, like Zinx was sitting uncontested in the hill. Proto was not getting any nades thrown over because they didn't even have a trophy. They just weren't getting contested. Uh, exotic was finding kills left and right. Mayhem was finding kills left and right. And a series that was so, favored one side for slaying in game one slaying for for draza and fellow in that control and then slaying in the hard point um it really just came down to honestly this is gonna sound stupid but like uh, mr mid maps didn't kill like they, they got a couple of kills and then they never held an actual hard point together but in order to actually hold the hard point together you have to continue to kill on the map and the kills they were getting were not coming at opportune times they were coming at the ends of transitions when you already have yourself set up they were coming it weirdly in the plane in the middle of the map when the hill was like on the other side of the map it just it, it didn't feel like they were on the same page collectively. It all felt like they were so focused on getting mid-map control that they thought that that would then translate into hill control, and it didn't. And then they didn't have the kills to follow that up with correcting that mistake. So, and, and a team that's so good at, at slaying, they just didn't do it, and higher did. That is my breakdown. So, Ali, I'm going to point this next question to you. Spaceman touched on it a little bit there with Draza. What made his play so perform his performance so impressive here? We heard his name quite a bit, and I'm sure our highlight reel is full of his experiences in this series. What stood out to you about Draza? I mean, even though they ended up falling, Draza has just been consistently trying to carry his team on his backpack. You know, whenever Midmap started to get a couple of footholds, it would usually Draza's name behind it. You know, sometimes it would be Fellow, sometimes yeah. it would be Des, but it would always be followed by a Draza getting a two piece, doing a three piece in Hill, getting that playing control. It was always Draza kind of being the back line to kind of make those plays for his team. Unfortunately, they just weren't able to keep up seems to me that Draza was the core of the little bit of success that we did see out of mid Mr. Midmaps in this series. Um, would you say that that's true to maybe their performance in the Challenger series thus far in this season, Spaceman? What do you think? 
Uh, you know, I think that it can be... I'm going to disagree. I think it could be easy to see that, that Draza has that effect because he drops such big numbers, right? And, and you're looking at his recent success and the fact that he was in the Pro League. But let's also remember that Fellow is very much the IGL of this team. And you even look back to last season when Fellow galvanized Standy and Diamond Con with the team changes they had and Paul X, who was there for a little bit. Like, Diamond... Uh, excuse me, uh, um, Fellow is is an IGL for this roster. And I feel like he maybe just didn't have complete control over it, but with Fellow and Nagafen there, you're talking about Fellow currently a, su a sub for Dallas Empire. Like, this should have been a team that didn't have communication issues. They shouldn't have had IGL issues. Right. Draza was popping off and no one else was. And that's the problem is that when your IGL is struggling and Draza is really only carrying just by numbers wise, there's something, discon there's disconnect there, right? And so it, it just seemed like they weren't on the same page the entire series. Thrilling conclusions tonight in the North American region. We saw the subliners delivered their first 3-0 loss here as Western was able to come over the top of them. And we also see Mr. Minmaps falling to the enemy team here. We're going to come to our, our next bit of competition in, in the Call of Duty League. Next week, it is Elimination Week. We have a, a lot of a great lineup ahead of us, and I hope you all tune in. Thank you very much for tuning in and checking out the show for today. We'll be back again with more Call of Duty action. Stay tuned.